You haven't met? No, I just oh. email. Oh, this is Stephanie. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's just Ken. Oh, um, Ken? Yeah, but it's spelled differently. Yeah. That's well, my son's name, his name is Chris, but it's C A R I S S E. My mm -hmm. parents are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> But did he choose that? No, he spelled it C R I S S. Oh. <laughs> and we fight over that because, and so because of that, I call him Christopher, which. He's like, no, everybody thinks my name is Christopher. I'm like, well. It is in your mind. It is in mine.
And Ken, did you get your key, Bob? Yeah. Okay. I'm good, how are you? Have you guys uh, attended a orientation yet? No. I have. You have? Usually I would give you a binder today, but we don't have any made right now because um, I just ordered them. So I just got them yesterday. Um, but if you, on the 14th, we have a uh, new agent orientation at 9 a.m. Yeah, right in here. So if you want to just come to that, we'll have a binder. And, okay. You know, yeah, I'm fine. You're welcome. Yeah, you're fine. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, if it's in the MLS and, and it has a, a uh, commission uh, in the MLS, you have to pay that amount. Doesn't matter. Is it, is it in the MLS? Yeah, I went to the three before this one. Oh, you did? Yeah. What's your name? Ten. Ten. Good morning. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> Started here shortly. Jeff is going to be the instructor. September. Okay. Yeah. Have you, how have you been? I've just been going to the classes. Oh, I haven't yeah. actually like done anything. Yeah. 
Because I want to know what I'm doing first before I mess up something. I know, right? I feel like I want to learn more about the market first. Because, like, everybody that I, um, I don't know, I do a lot of social media to, like, you know, be able to, like, show people that you know yeah. about real estate. It's like you got to know the numbers mm -hmm. and, like, how the market is. Yeah. Like the, I think there's something that you could sign up for and they send you like reports. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I think it's the wrong title. They have the parts at the I know, I'm going to buy you know, I don't know if it's like computer, but um, yeah, I'm going to do that. Well, I think it's pretty easy to use. Like, you just go to the website and type in what you need, and it like prints out like a whole essay or whatever. Um, I thought it was like, you yeah. like, yeah. like, yeah. like, it writes the stuff for you. It's, 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 down down down. Down. Mm -hmm. it's just a website. I don't think you have the free. What's it called? Chat I use it all the time, yeah. So you know, it's like the it's like the internet. You just go on there and say, write me this, and then I'll write you whatever you want. It will do whatever you want. Like literally but just come up with stuff that you want to do. We're gonna be sorry. I think it has changed now, though, because I started using it a while ago, and like before when I just pulled off, it's like it will literally, like, I don't know, just write like crazy stuff. Like, people were using that for coding, people were using that for like. Yeah, I guess you can use that for a script, like if you don't know a 
how you would answer this from the question. But I actually asked yesterday, like, what was the market? And like, then he was like, okay, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, do you report on the real estate market for Las Vegas? And it was like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you can use that for scripts. How would you answer this question? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, there is like a, a version that you can pay for, so I think that's the one. I don't know. 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 I Share a PowerPoint or something? Well, what I did, well, here's the normal PowerPoint. Right? What I did is I also have just the RPA up. I have transaction desk, so you can pull up the oh, form. Yeah, yeah. So you so when you're ready, I can I can share this screen because right now we're shared on the uh, okay. on the, the so uh but it, th this one uh, is just the R the RPA. Yeah. 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 So let's go over that. Okay, okay cool. Yeah, so he's just wondering what people said on him. I guess Mark's got the job and he's going to be up there talking. I, I thought that too. I'm glad to. I told that so you started this in August. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I said just just every day. I said, oh, I know about the Russian. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I Yeah, yeah, four, yeah, 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 Beautiful, all right, Mark. I got it from here. Oh, so, so let me know when you want to change it over to. The, okay, yeah. I should be able to show up. I don't know, but I'm sure that. Yeah, but you got to share it. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sharing it through for Zoom. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What you want to say? I'm going to try to get on my email real quick, too. I'm first. Have you already like sent all your headshots or like business cards or anything? No. I just said, do you have any waters? I just said, you did? The headshot? Yeah, well, because my cousin's two issues, so I asked him, and then oh, okay. I started to bring him out by the coaches. Yeah, that means you can't All right, everybody, good morning. Good morning. Well, that was weak. <laughs> it sounds like you love real estate. <laughs> That's all right. Let's try it again. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. There we go. Good morning. Good morning, Nelly. How are you? I'm doing good. Are you there still, too? I'm sorry? I just said Cammy's on there as well. 
Let me see Cammy on there. Maybe she she got off when she seen my face. She said, I don't like that. Good morning. Yes. Why can't I go back? How come I can't go back to the I want to pull my email out? The only reason why I can't so you can say, yeah, that's what I thought. To mark me something that we don't know? Oh, there it is. We just have to have the right touch. Yes, sir. Gracias. You're welcome. Let's go here. Come on, Jeff. Switch to existing chrome profile. If I end up doing that, it's going to screw everything up, right? Maybe. Ah, this is good. Good morning. Sign in and grab a sheet, please. All right. So, good morning again. My name is Jeff Baldwin. I am the broker manager of the Northwest office. Uh, got good news and I got bad news. What do you want first? Bad. Bad, bad news, I've never taught this class. <laughs> good news? It's RPA. I'm very skilled at it. Okay. Good. So, uh, Cammie, can you see this on your screen? This right here, the housing inventory? Yes, I can. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. So, I always like to start it out with this, you guys. If we don't know what the hell's going on in the real estate business, how do we do real estate? Right, how many homes on the market? 5,500. How many homes did we sell in the last uh, seven days? 400. So if you don't know these numbers, you guys and gals, it's going to be very difficult to do real estate. How do you speak intelligently when you're at a bar, football game, soccer, basketball, whatever you hiking club, biking club, whatever you do for fun in your life, and somebody says, oh, my God, you're a real estate agent? What's going on? I don't know. Ask somebody who cares. You guys have 16,200 real estate agents in Las Vegas. How many of them agents did not do a transaction last year? Good. Yeah, good right now. Yeah, cool. Thank you. How many did not do a transaction last year? About 50, I'm sorry, about 46% did not do a real estate transaction last year. That means 8,000 agents didn't do a deal. Now, I want you to sit and grasp that for just a minute. 8,000 people did not do a deal last year. Can you imagine if we had 10,000 doctors in Las Vegas and 5,000 didn't treat anybody at all in one year? Lawyers. Now, there's two ways you can look at this. One is, wow, that sucks and it's stupid. Or the second one is, wait a minute, that gives me a great opportunity because half the competition is already eliminated themselves, right? The main reason why, because nobody knows what's going on in the business, right? You guys are all for basically new agents, correct? Yeah. Anybody with the MLS? You guys MLS yet? No, I was asking Mark yesterday. 
Do you have a license? Okay, so you can't do anything until you get your license. Once you physically have possession of your license, you have 45 days to join LDL. Okay, yeah, because they sent me an email, but they were asking for the license number, so I guess. Yeah, who who was asking for last? Um, so I got an email to sign up for yeah, the onboarding. You don't need it. Uh... No, for on yeah, yeah, you don't need the onboarding now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for the onboarding, I actually I just did it in my office the other day. Well, for someone in the Northwest, I just did it the other day. So you don't need that. So the biggest thing, you guys, um, is the problem that I see that we have today in real estate is that nobody knows what the hell's going on. You guys are all brand new. So if somebody said, what's going on in the real estate business? I don't know. I'm brand new. Well, do you have any idea what's going on? No, I don't, I don't really care. Pass me another drink. Let's go play foosball. I don't know. But that's what's going on in our business, guys. Right now, the bar sets so all over real estate. You can step right over it. So if this right here is something that you guys should be having these numbers. And let me see. I should be able to. All right, good, all right. So as you can see, now, this is a time of the day, right there, that, that opened up, it's on 1029. On 1029, which is Sunday, there were 5,500 homes on the market right now. Of these 5,500 homes, by the way, that's down 40% year over year. Of that 5,500 homes, there's 4,200 uh, single family homes on the market. There's uh, 1,200, that's up by, by the way, that's up about 150 homes, townhomes. Uh, 1200 and there's 104 manufacturers in this home in this area here the price range from 100,000 to 400,000 is 1900 homes on the market with 187 price reductions right so jeff why is that important well jeff that's a great question i'm gonna answer for you here's why you need to know that if i have a if i'm sitting at a football game and a guy says to me well you know listen i'm thinking about selling my home oh that's that's awesome what do you think it's worth well it's probably worth about 380 in reality is worth 320. Okay, well, I just want you to understand something. Right now, if you realize this, that homes from 100,000 to 400,000, there's almost 2,000 homes on the market in that price range. He's going to go, okay, what does that mean? Well, what it means is buyers have choices today. And if your home's not in the top 1%, it's not going to be looked at. Right? There are homes, and then there are, wow, there's homes, right? Most people have homes. I mean, you see homes all the time, same carpet that was down 10 years ago, 20 years ago, same paint, haven't done nothing to it, and then they think they're going to get top dollar in today's market. Not going to happen. Okay? And less than the top 1%. So let's say that I'm, I'm now sitting in that same area, and the guy says, I'm a buyer. Well, that's great. You realize right now, you've got 2,000 homes you can look at in that price range that you're looking for. Isn't that great? You've got opportunity now. Two years ago, a year ago, there were, you know, 400, right? So you're limited. Now you've got opportunity right here. So 400,000, 800,000, there's 2,600 homes on the market with 267 price reductions. If you ever want to see an overpriced home, nine times out of 10, it's a real estate agent's own property. Realtors don't even know how to price a property. When they own it, they want 50 grand more than it's worth. Over 800,000, there's 900 on the market that, of that. That's up about 170 homes in the last week. These are weekly numbers, by the way. These are where the homes are located. New to the market in the last seven days, 700 homes came on the market in the last seven days, right? What are you hearing from the news? Everything sucks, put your head under the pillow and wait for another year to come back out. You guys have an opportunity that most people aren't gonna have right now. You're getting into a market where skills, training, and knowledge is what's gonna get you business. A year ago, two years ago, you could be the stupidest person on the planet and sell a home. Somehow stumble into a listing and it sold within a week for 50 grand more than it was worth. And you went, <laughs> I'm great. I know what I'm doing. I'm badass. A year later, out of business. That's what they're saying. Uh, whoever started in the last couple of years is going to be struggling right now. It's like because they were selling so many houses, just doing nothing. Yeah. They were not going to get tough. 2008, when I got into the market, it was kind of similar to that. They just thought they had great skills. They could put a home, they, they stumbled into a listing. They got their cousin's listing because they're like, oh, you're my cousin, I got to give it to you. And they sold it in about a half an hour, and they thought they were pumping their chest 
and thought they were awesome, and then give that they're out of business or pushing a broom at McDonald's because they thought they were so goddamn great. Back on the market in the last seven days, 188 homes came back on the market. Withdrawn in the last seven days, 162. Why does a home come off the market? Yeah, why didn't it sell? Price. price every time. Don't let anybody kid you guys. Price is what sells homes, period. And then it's kitchens and bathrooms. So if you have a seller and they say, you say, are you going to do anything to the house to fix it up? Oh, yeah, yeah. What I'm going to do is in the left corner of the hallway, there's a three inch square. I'm going to paint that. Well, listen, don't paint the, paint, don't paint the hallway. Why don't you paint the kitchen or the master bathroom? Primary bathroom. That's what sells homes. Kitchen and bathrooms are price. Price first. Don't let anybody kid you with, well, Jeff, if you got a taco sign and you had a taco truck out front, you had a mermaid swimming in the pool, somebody's going to go, oh, my God, how cool is that? Yeah, I'll give you 50 grand more than it's worth. That mermaid's cute. Doesn't work that way. Don't watch Million Dollar Listing. L.A. Okay, that's the biggest horse shit I've ever seen. That's what agency is so funny that, oh, well, well, me and you are going to sit in a bar. We're going to go get a $5 million deal. I'm going to get $400,000, and then we're going to go to the beach. Doesn't work that way. So you've got to know what the hell's going on in the market. We're trying to last seven days. That means the home did not sell, right? So when you're talking to your seller, Mr. Seller, do you realize right now that 162 homes came off the market? Why do you think that is? And then shut up. Why do you think, why do you think, why, why are these homes coming off the market? He knows why. Price. Today, sellers still think it's two years ago and they're going to get $70,000 more for their house. It's not the case. Trust me. Um, available months worth of inventory. What does that mean? What does that mean? Available months worth of inventory. Why is that important? So if because it helps determine how many houses would last in for a certain amount of months. For example, it would be for like buyer's market, balance market, and the seller's market. I love it. Yeah, I love the way you just said it. He's 100% correct. What that means right now, you guys, if no new homes came on the market today, we would be out of homes to sell in just, just about almost three months. So how do we know if we're in a buyer's market or seller's market? Well, you pretty much said it. Here's how. Zero to five months worth of inventory is a seller's market. So we're at, let's say, for argument, say three months. So we are in a seller's market still. 80% of the real estate agents don't know that. If you took a poll today with the real estate agents in Las Vegas, I guarantee you most would say we're in a buyer's market. We are still in a seller's market. Zero to six months is neutral. I always say it's neither good nor bad, or I say it's either a buyer nor seller. And then zero to seven months and beyond is absolutely a buyer's market. Now, you guys haven't lived in a buyer's market because you're still brand new agents. I have. They're not as much fun when you're a listing agent. When you're a listing agent and you have a, it's a buyer's market, the seller has to give the car in the driveway. They got to put the buyer's kid through college. They got to put a pool in the backyard. Okay, they have to do all these things to get the home sold. So thank God we're not in that market. Um, so Jeff, just a quick question. You said um, zero to seven months of available is a buyer's market. Correct. So I guess I'm confused with the numbers. So if I see something that is two months, like is it really more like five to five plus well, months or right. six plus yeah. months? Yeah, so zero to seven. So seven months plus is a buyer's market. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Zero to five months is a seller's market, and six months worth of inventory is, 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 a, is a neutral. Okay. It's either good nor bad. Great. Thank you. Um, home sold in the last seven days. I if I if I teach post licensing as well, and I'll say to the agents, how many homes are on the market? And I'll hear 5,012, you know, all the numbers all over the place. As soon as I say how many homes were sold in the last four, uh, seven days, crickets. 
There it is right there for you. 400 homes were sold in the last seven days. We were selling almost 1,800 uh, every seven days a year or two ago. 1,800? Yes. Last sold in the last 30 days. I'm sorry, not there. Year to date, this is one of my favorite stats. Uh, you sold year to date, 25,000 homes we sold year to date. Last year, we sold 31,000 homes at the same time. That's down 20, 20%. That's a, that's a pretty good number. In January, that number was 59%. When you know the numbers, you guys, this is where you have to know them and understand them. I expect everybody in this room and on this call to do a video every week that says, hi, my name is Jeff and I'm a Realty One. Here's the market stats for January 10th at 10 o'clock. But, 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 but four or five numbers like I did. When you want, and then look at the camera and say, when you want to know what the hell's going on, you talk to me because I'm the expert. You guys, people buy all the time with energy and enthusiasm. Okay, could I sell you five minutes? No, you have to have energy and enthusiasm, please. How do we get these numbers? Um, like all the offices produce them with some sort. What, what office do you guys in? Yeah. Yeah. All the guys, all the guys southwest. Yeah. Some of them. I won't hold that against you. <laughs> Jared, to my buddy. These are the numbers that we produce in my office. Tim has something similar. Mark has something similar. If you want to get on my Facebook, and this is where I post them on my Facebook, it's uh, Realty One Group Northwest Private. Ask to join, and then I will approve you. And then you can get these numbers. We generally do them every week. You know the funniest thing about this, you guys, is I, so we did this, we give these numbers every week. We stopped. We stopped giving them for one month. And I had probably three people call me and go, hey, where are the numbers at? Mm -hmm. Three people out of, I got 600 people on my Facebook, uh, on our Facebook, Three people asked for it. What does that tell you? They don't care. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. They don't give a shit about this business. And guess what? Their wallet tells them that. Right? Sorry. Um, Did you say Realty One Group, Northwest right. Private. Ask to join, and then I'll approve you. You can see these numbers. So there's one that says referral network. Um, I mean, that should be a... No, it's oh. maybe the same. Like I said, Realty One Group Referral Network. Yeah, there's a bunch of different ones. I just yeah. never... No, it's got to be Northwest Private. And you should see a, a group of us. Uh, I think if you, I think you've seen the picture. You should see a group of us at Top Golf. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. So those are those numbers there. Here's the number here: the vacancy rate, forty nine percent. What does that mean? I'm not guys. I'm being. <laughs> I'm not being corny. I know what it means, but what does the 49% represent? Why is that important if I'm working with a seller? So, yeah, the house. Here's why. Easier to sell. You're going to have sellers that say, what's your name? Stephen. Stephen. Gabe. Gabe? Yeah, Gabe. Gabe. Ken. Who? Ken. Ken. Lily. Lily, okay. I will forget all your names in this. <laughs> so why that number is important, you guys, is because if you're working with a seller, because here's what the sellers are doing today. Now, I'm not going to say this all the time, but you're going to run across. Okay, get Gabe, Gabe. All right, Gabe, so here, I want you to list my house, but here's what I want you to do. Uh, you can show it from 115 to 130 on a Saturday, as long as there's a blood move, followed by two Saturdays, with a Thursday in between. And then you can show it on a Monday from 1 to 105. Uh, by the way, set the alarm, uh, pull the car in the drive, make these, put these booties on, and then scrub the wallet on your way out. Eight, that, 2,800 homes, Mr. Seller, they can see like that. And you're putting all these stipulations on so you see your home. What do you think the odds of that happen? As soon as you hear that, the, seller, the buyer's agent is going to say, oh, these guys aren't cooperating. Let's go look at something, all the homes. So you got to make it easy to show a home. Now, I have no problem with they're living there and we need 24 hours. I got I got no problem with that. 
but we have to make it as easy as possible. And that's why that number is so important when you're talking to your sellers about it. They need to know. 2,800 homes can be seen just like that right now, no sweat. Is that normal that like half of the homes that are available for sale are vacant? That I number hasn't changed for probably 10 years. Really? It's wow. gone from 46 to 49, 46 to 49. Hmm. It's the craziest number. I would think it would be maybe 20, 25%. Yeah. No, wow. it's been that way for, for, I'm not kidding you guys, probably 10 years. Hmm. That number has been 46, 45, 42, 49. Hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. So the reason to give you guys, I want to show you this because it's so vitally important. You've got to know what's going on in the market. If you don't learn anything today, that's the most important thing. I tell agents all the time. <clears throat> the thing that we need to do is we have tools and technology. We have websites. We have all the stuff, all the app, all that stuff's amazing. But you need to know this. You need to know how to talk to somebody and you need to know the contracts. If you do that, you can make money in this business. Nobody gives a crap about your website. Oh, but look at my website. It's fun. I got a picture of me on the ground with puppies crawl over me. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Oh, on Tuesday, man, two good tacos. It's a great taco shop. Nobody gives a shit. What they care about is you know what the hell's going on in the business, right? That's the number one thing that you need to know. You need to know what to say, and you need to know how to say it. That's the most important thing. Back in the day, I came from Prudential. I've been, I've been a real estate agent for 17, 18 years now. I've been a broker for 10. Back in the day, I was at Prudential. We had a book this thick, and it was all leather bound, and it had Prudential embossed in it. It was beautiful. And you open it up, and the first page was our motto. Uh, we love kids. I uh, love uh, grandpa. Uh, next page was a picture with puppies crawling on you, rolling around. Oh, it was so much fun. The next page was our Nobody gives a crap about that stuff today. Nobody cares. All they want to know is, what are you going to do for me and how are you going to get my homes? That's all they care about today. None of this other stuff matters to them. So make sure you understand that. Okay. Any questions about this? Anybody on uh, on the camera? Cammy, uh, uh, you have any questions? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, guys. All right, so let's stop sharing that. Let's go here to here. Let's see. Mark had it here somewhere. Oh, let's go here to see what this looks like. Uh, it's a person to bring you guys. I don't even need to. I don't even let's see what this is. Let's just go here. I think it is slideshow. And I can now see your application. Okay. And then from the beginning. Okay. So let's see. You know, it's funny. Every time I come to this, this thing never works. Mm -hmm. oh, there's Jeff. Beautiful. All right. Let's see where it goes. Okay. Mod one, two. How many you guys have? How many mods have you guys have, by the way? Just curious. Just your first one, all you guys? Uh, like the worst. Three, like eight, maybe. Oh, really? Good. Good. Okay. Um, I do this one right here, by the way, which is a good one. It's uh, right here, number five. Buyer, working with buyers and getting your offer accepted. I teach that class. And anybody that knows me knows I loathe buyers. Okay? I can't stand buyers, and I don't work with buyers. But I'm going to teach you the right way to work with them. Buyers have very little loyalty today. They will drop you in two seconds. If you don't do a buyer's mortgage agreement with them, they'll drop you and move on to somebody else. Just like that. You've worked with them for three months. Uh, they're sitting at a bar. They're complaining to their friend about how they can't find the agent sucks and you can't find them a home, even though the seller's causing or the buyer's causing all the problems. There's an agent on the other end who goes, I can get you a home. We'll get you a new property, no sweat, even though they have the same MLS that we use. And they take your client, you never hear from them again, and you spend all this time and energy with them. Do not get into that. It's crazy. Today, the loyalty of the buyers. It was bad back in the day. It's a hundred times worse today. How about the lawsuit against uh, yeah. What do you think that's going to happen? Oh, it's going to fundamentally change our real estate business forever. Well, I mean, at the end, it's kind of going to be the same, right? Like the price, but now the buyer is going to pay the buyer's agent. That's right. But like, is that going to be like a 
part of the loan or is that um, what I see, it's, it's funny thing that we do things in America where we pass laws and we do things and then don't realize, wow, well, there's unintended consequences that we didn't realize. Something's going to have to happen because you guys haven't worked. You guys have to close, you haven't closed the transaction yet, right? So nine times out of ten, when you work with a buyer, they barely have the down payment. They don't have closing costs, and now you want them to pay your twelve thousand dollars. Okay, that goes like you know what, you know who. Okay, so that's going to be the tough sell. And so I think Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and these lenders are going to have to get on board with. We've got to loan the seller or the buyer X amount of money. But here's the problem. Their monthly is going to go up. Their monthly is going to go up. And they're not going to see any value in what the, what the buyer's agents are doing. Right? I mean, you guys, I don't... Uh, what's this, Jim? Most buyer agents suck. Okay. I open the door. Give? Yeah. Gabe, Gabe, Gabe. Talk. Gabe, Lily. <laughs> Don't remember your name. Stephen. Kevin. Ken. 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 Damn, of course. <laughs> All right. You open the door. Hey, by the way, uh, just so you know, Stephen, the kitchen's right there. And I know that because there's a stove. <laughs> we'll take a look. That's what most agents do. And then they do this. We'll take a look, Kevin. I know what you want to do. Oh, you know, I just know we're going to see another home. Instead of really showing the home the right way. And that's the problem. Buyers, they just don't have a whole lot of value because they don't give themselves value. They don't do a presentation. They don't know how to show a home. Showing a home isn't walking in and saying, by the way, Stephen, there's the kitchen. There's the sink. <laughs> do you like the flooring? What kinds of? I don't know. Looks like wood. I have no idea. Right? They didn't read the MLS. They don't have no idea what's going on on the property. Hey, by the way, Stephen, <laughs> if you go in the very back, that's where the that's where the primary uh, bedrooms are. <laughs> that's the shit that we're able to do. Show no value, right? And that's the problem that we have right now in this business. Our business is fundamentally going to change. Now, the lawsuits going on, nothing's going to change, you guys, for two, three, four years. Could be sooner, but no, I don't foresee it. It's going to be tied up and legal, and they're going to, you know, they're going to fight it. Berkshire Hathaway, Keller Williams, and our association going to, going to, um, uh, what do they do when they to fight? It. They're not just going to pay. They're just not going to write over a check for one point seven million dollars. They're going to appeal. And appeal. That's what I was looking for. So they're going to appeal it. It's going to, it's going to drag on. Nothing's going to change. Obviously, you guys, for us, we're going to keep doing what we're talking about. So the buyers represent buyers. Ugh, come on, Jeff. Buyers, buyers uh, uh, representation agreement. The uh, uh, buyers brokerage agreement. One of the single most important things that you guys should be getting. Let me see if I can get Mark and pull this up. I don't. I'll go through this, but I'm more than just speaking up. I don't know why I can't get mine. Here. No. Hey, Mark. Uh, no, I'm going to have a thing there. I like it, though. Fire single handling one of the most important documents you're going to have. Again, would you take a listing, would you take a listing without a listing agreement? Uh, Never. Okay. We have agents all the time taking, working with a buyer without a buyer's representation. I would not Work with one buyer today who would not sign a buyer's property. You guys are brand new, so you're going to get investors stock. Hey, Stephen. <laughs> Dude, I love you, man. Tell you what I want you to find me a home in Summerlin, uh, 3,000 square foot with a pool, two story, on a half acre lot for $200,000. <laughs> and we're in, buddy. I'm going to buy it. If I can find that, I don't need you. I'll buy it myself. <laughs> No, 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 Stephen, here's all I want you to do. When you get the commission, I want you to give 2% back to me. And then when I list it, I'm going to give it to you for 1%, but I want half a percent back. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, investors care about one person. Who is that? Yeah, come on, uh, do your, put your thing on there, whatever that's. Yeah, do your magic. So investors care about one person, and that's themselves. Jeff's opinion 
as soon as you talk to an investor calls you, because you're going to get the call, you guys. Oh, hey, that's great. I'd love to work with you, Susie. Uh, that's great. Um, what I have, there's a phone call to buyer's brokerage agreement. Click. They're going to hang up on you. Because they work with 7, 8, 10, 12 different Dean Baton realtors, and whoever finds them the best property they're going to work with. And then, and then they're only going to want half the commission. Yep. yep. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. They're only going to they're only going to uh, uh, work with one who gets it to them, and that, and then they're going to take half the commission. True story. Get a call from my one of my agents, Jeff. Uh, I'm working with this investor. He's a effing. You know what? I can't stand this guy. I'm going to punch him in his stupid looking face. Do you know anybody who wants to work with him? I go, well, not really. It sounds like the guy's a real paying ass. I said, how'd you find this guy? She goes, I married him. He's my husband. <laughs> and I'm never working with him again. I said, beauty. So that's something we got to look at, you guys. So this is... But you guys aren't, you guys don't have this yet. You guys aren't on the MLS. Mm -hmm. So this is MLS. This is trans. You do? Yeah. This is trans. Have you played with this at all? Not yet. You need to get on there and just mess around. Not, not, not so much the forms, but you need to get on the MLS and see how to get on the homes and search them and all that kind of stuff. So this is the buyer's program. Uh, you? Yeah. Okay. Tammy, can you see this? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Let that open up. This is what a buyer's brochure agreement kind of looks like. If I had a dollar for every agent that got burned out of a deal where the buyer that they worked with for four months went and bought a new home, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be in the Caribbean on a boat. Your buyers are going to be leaving church on Sunday. They're going to be on a Saturday driving around with their significant other. They're going to see a new home. You've worked with them for three months. They're going to pop into a new home. The first thing the new home rep says, hey, uh, Gabe? Yeah. Gabe, are you, are you guys working with a bot, with an agent? Gabe, you're going to look at his significant other and go, I don't know. Uh, have we been working with an agent? I don't, I, I don't think so. I'm not really sure. And you're like, we dated for six months. We broke bread together. I took you all over the property. And now you don't remember me? And the, and the threshold rule, rule is over. Now Gabe is going to get, uh, I'm not going to get paid because he didn't give him my card. And that's what this talks about. Why is this doing this? Why is it doing that? That's weird. Well, let's see what it does. So my point is, you guys, you have to do this form. You have to understand it. And I wouldn't present this as, as soon as I met him. Hey, by the way, oh, I'm a nice to meet you. I'm just nice to meet you. Hey, by the way, sign this. I wouldn't do that. I would do my presentation, show them who I am, show them what I know, and then bring this to their attention. And say, when I do, uh, when I do uh, uh, rev up number five, uh, working with a buyer and getting your accepted, there's like probably 10 paragraphs for this alone. If somebody says, says to you, um, I, I, I don't, I'm, I don't like, I don't feel, I don't like one of these. Well, this is just a really good fun. And then all these 10 paragraphs on what to say. Mr. Mr. Gabe, I love you. You're great. I'm going to do work hard for you. I'm going to do all these things. I showed you my, what I do to get a home accepted. I need you to sign this. Well, I don't want to. I can appreciate that. Tell me why. Well, I don't feel comfortable because I like to use 12 different agents and the one who gets me the best deal is going to get the, they get the deal. That's when you say, okay, I appreciate it. Thanks for letting me know that. Come on, get up. Get up. What do you mean? Get up. Our, we're all, we're done. And then you start escorting them to the door. Would you rather fail right now today or in three months from now? Okay. <laughs> exactly right. And I tell you this all the time. Fail quickly. I don't know why this is doing that. Why is it? What the hell's going on? Let's go back. So you can go back. Try it one more time. Maybe I clicked it too many times. Let's see, it's not moving. I'll, I'll do it again. Yeah. Ah, maybe I can get the hell out of it. Yeah. Um, I used to work in corporate um, software sales. Okay. And they used to always say, you want to do 
good business, right? You want to find someone that's going to be a good partner right. versus wasting all of your time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even if they sign the deal, then they're going to be a pain in the ass with oh, support, yeah. maintenance, et cetera. So yeah. to me, I view it the same way. Like, yeah. I'm not going to waste my time trying to, you know, just grab any deal. No. I want to make sure that I, it's going to be a good business. And I'm glad you said that because here's the deal, you guys. If you're going to do one deal a year, you're going to hang on to this guy like, like Krim Death. And it's going to be the biggest nightmare you've ever had. I'm at, I have an agent. I'm like, how did you freaking hook up with this moron? Well, Jeff, I'm only going to do two transactions this year. This guy, I'm going to hang on to him like grim death. Well, good. You're going to be in, you're going to be going to the division. I complain. Try to hang on to this idiot. You guys, you know somebody's a jackass within about 30, 40 minutes of working. Right? Now, sometimes it takes a week. And then you're like, how did I hook up with this ass? Oops. How did I hook up with this guy? Because that's exactly what you're going to do. Remember something. You think it's fun right now with these pieces of pain in the ass? Wait till you get to the inspection. Wait till you get to the appraisal. Okay, wait till you get to the closing. That's when the fun really gets to start. I'm going to tell you this all the time. How did you hook up with this guy? And you know why? Because if you're not going to prospect every day, you're going to take the first unit you can find. If you prospect every day, you get to pick and choose the people you want to work with. That's the difference. I prospected every day. I got to pick and choose the people I wanted to work with. Now, did I come? Did I meet you? Sir? Absolutely. That's how I learned. Okay, because I worked with some guy. I'm like, how? Oh, this is. I'll kill this guy. Okay. I hope he gets hit by a bus on the way to his new house. Okay, because that's him. And then, guys, I guess that's any of you. I love Stephen. After he signs. That's after right. Signs. Yeah. After he signs. Okay. I hope Stephen gets hit by a bus when this is done. Okay, because guys, it's going to be that way. I have, especially today, I have never seen in my life every single day buyers and sellers are batshit nuts that I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I've seen shit, I'm just like, how are you so difficult to work with? I mean, fighting over $200, fighting over $500, it's like, you're going to dig in on 500 bucks? I, guys, I'm telling you, but if you don't, if you don't prospect every day, you're going to take the first person you can get, and that's exactly what's going to happen. So, <clears throat> buyer brokerage agreement. I need a buyer as soon as the employee grant, uh, the brokerage uh, commencing on, expiring on. Now you can get out of these two. There's a form to get out of them. Generally, property, commercial land, residential. <clears throat> Here's some of the important things, and it, it talks about uh, about some of them. Buyer agrees to work exclusively. No, this is all capitals. Buyer works exclusively with a broker and not any other broker. Buyer agrees to further broker with relevant data, records, documents, and information, including loan pre approval letter, approval funds, onto purchase upon request, a broker and authorized broker to furnish copies to prospective sellers, landlords, all that. Guys, you would be amazed. I have worked with husbands and wives. Husband didn't want to move. Wife wanted to move, husband sabotaged it the whole way. And I've had advice with this. And I'm like, we have a problem here. I'm trying to get you guys into a house. You're stopping us and you want it. You two need to talk and figure it out. I'm out of here. Good luck. Right? Do they ever buy a house without you? Probably. I don't give a shit. I'm moving on with my life. I want to do transactions, not complications. And you're going to run into people, guys, are complicated. The best feeling you're ever going to get in your entire life in real estate. So like you said, uh, Bob, Susie, good luck. I'm out of here. Okay? Now, I wouldn't quite do that. Yeah. But I would certainly say, we're not a good fit. And I'd, I'd rather <clears throat> to walk away than disappoint you guys later. Good luck. I can refer your Berkshire Hathaway agent if you'd like. Okay? Do they buy us? Sometimes they do, I guess. I don't know. I don't care. Because I'm going to do my 36 transactions with or without them, right? But the problem most agents do is they hang on to them. Oh, I can, I can make them. I can fix them. No, you can't. Buyer agrees to be available. You guys, do you see a pattern here why they're doing this? I mean, you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, this guy wants to buy a house and he's not making himself available? He's not cooperating with us? Yeah, it happens. I mean, you guys should be amazed. Buyer agrees to be available to examine properties that respond in a timely manner. Timely. You guys, your buyers, I promise you, 
will ghost you. When they ghost you, they rat, they found another agent. Okay? All the time. So I, I have a question about that. Please. So one of the things that they said was, right, you have this this agreement that maybe they've signed, yep. hopefully. Yep. Um, and then they... If they don't, you walk away. Right. And if they sign and then they ghost you, yep. right? But then if they buy... Oh, I actually, it only applies for the seller, though, right? Right. No way. No, how do, you get, yeah, how do you get the commission? Like, how do you find out? You just stalk them? Or well, you can absolutely. What you can do is you can do a search, and you can look for their name, and you go one, you look at the MLS, or I'm not the MLS, the assessor website, okay. find their name, and you see they bought a home. Mm. Now, what this gets you, because this is between you and the buyer, so now you sue them for your commission. Okay. Now, is it going to be easy? Do you call them up? Hey, Bob. Uh, I know that you signed this deal, so go ahead and write a realty one group and check you out for $12,622. <laughs> oh, let me get my money. Uh, realty, how do you spell that? They don't do that. You go to an attorney. You got to do some work. Go to an attorney. You have them draft a letter. Pay me within 30 days. When they don't, you take them to court. You sue them. When you go to court, here's the beauty about it. Judge is sitting up there. Yeah, I had a buyer broker agreement with them that's fully been fully executed. My broker signed it. They knew what they were getting into. The judge looks at it. So, did you buy a house with this guy? Well, no, no. Uh, he was gross income. He was stupid. He wasn't fun to be with. And I didn't realize it until later he was really stupid. Okay, great. Write him a check for $12,652. That's, that's the power it has. But most people don't take the distance. That's the funny thing about it. I have a team in my office, and he makes every one of his guys sign them. Uh, every one of his agents get one of these signed. He's got burned about probably three times and not got. I said, Jack, what are you doing? Well, Jeff, I don't want to have it. Wait a minute. You don't want to hassle $12,000? You don't want to put $200 into get 12, right? Yeah, is it going to take six or eight months? Absolutely. I'll wait, I'll wait <laughs> six months to get 12 grand, right. 15 grand, 20 grand. It's like money in the CD. Absolutely <laughs> right. Absolutely right. Because you got, I tell, I promise you this: when you go to the court, the judge is going to look at that and go, "King, king, king, done, pay him." It's that simple. That's how powerful this is. But you got, you got to be willing to take the distance. I've never seen anybody go, "Oh, let me write you a check." I, I didn't realize that, right? Great. I don't. Because you got here's here's the thing: when you're working with a buyer or a seller, they are absolutely your best friend. You guys are getting your hair cut together. You're getting fingernails done. You're going to movies. You're having bread together. It's an amazing time. You're singing songs. When something goes sideways, guess what? You're the stupidest person they've ever met. They have no idea why they picked you. You showed the home on Easter. On uh, Christmas Day, you took them out to show properties. You bent over backwards. You offered to give them this. You're going to give part of your commission back. When it goes sideways, you're the stupidest bastard they've ever seen, and they have no idea how crooked you are and why you do it. I have seen it. Okay? Ladies, and Lily, and you two ladies on the deal, nothing against you guys. I have seen them in a courtroom, put heavy mascara on, and start crying. You know what that looks like? Mascara streaming down their face. This professional real estate agent duped me, the dumb public, and beat me out of something, even though you're 100% right. Okay? I've seen it happen. So you better be careful, especially today. Real estate agents are easy to sue because why? We don't keep track of shit. Right? <clears throat> this is what happened two years ago. Buyers were paying 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. $100,000 more for the house. Right? I'd say to my agents. So when Bob said that he's going to pay 80 grand for the house, what did you do? Well, I, I clapped. I did some fist pumps. I said, yeah, I'm going to make more commission. That's great. Okay. But what did you do to protect it? What do you mean? I didn't do anything. So when he said he's going to pay 80 grand more for the house, you went, congratulations. That's a smart move. Yeah. What, what am I supposed to do? You didn't advise him to go see an attorney. You didn't advise him to see counsel. You didn't advise him to see speak to a CPA. You didn't do well. No, I, what am I supposed to do? When you get sued, okay, you will. The judge is going to say, "So, Jeff, what did you do when your client wanted to pay eighty grand more?" 
I said, yeah, I'm going to make $2,200 more. I'm going to buy a blah, blah, blah for my kid now. It's going to be great. Oh, she didn't do nothing to protect him. No, what should I do? Did you advise him? No, didn't do anything. Now we know if somebody does that to you, you need to, because you guys, you guys are going to have conversations, right? And you're going to say, well, I told him that. Now, remember, because we were at the uh, taco shack, and we had two good tacos, and his was really spicy. He commented how spicy it was, and I told him you shouldn't do that. And then he's going to say, good morning. He's going to say, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't even remember the conversation. I've never had that taco shop. We were there together, remember, because you spilled it on your shirt. That, I have no idea what you're talking about. And so from now on, what we're going to do is we're going to send an email. Shut that door, please. Oh, my mom, please. We're gonna we're gonna do something. We're gonna do an email on January tenth at two o'clock. I advise you to, to speak to a counsel, reach out to a real estate. I mean, reach out to a lawyer or your CPA before you agree to pay eighty thousand dollars more for a property. That's what you need to do. And then when the judge says you, so Lily, what did you do when your client wanted to pay eighty grand more? Well, what I did is I we were, we were together, and I strongly recommended that he. Speaks with the attorney, his counsel. Well, did you put it right? Well, yeah, I sent him an email right here, and then he confirmed it. Thank you. Case dismissed. Go away. That's what the difference is, you guys. Remember, remember this. You guys haven't sold a home yet. You're smarter than the public already. We're here. The dumb public's down here. The division, the division isn't here for us. The division is to protect society. From us. That's what they're here for. Okay. Does anybody ever get, oh, you guys aren't in the detail yet. Uh, there's a thing in the division called the uh, open house, and it talks about, and I just remember it's in my office a couple of weeks ago. And I go over the stuff they just got themselves into and the fines. Uh, property management, by the way, we don't do property management here, and you shouldn't do property management. In my opinion, you should. Shouldn't. Should not. I would not do property management. Sorry, that I actually do have the property manager permit. Uh, yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. Did it. Uh, you are not allowed to do property management here, so no, I understand. No, no, I know that. And I actually, uh, Tim, Tim told me all okay, about it. Good, good. I mean, I still have the permit because it comes with the license. Yeah. Much, but... it, uh, a lady was fined $492,000 uh, in November, uh, last November for property management. So don't, 97% of all the complaints in the division are property management related. So please, please don't get it. You can you can run your own properties, just don't run somebody else's. Okay? All right. New homes. And we just talked about this. <sighs> Some sellers pretending the home said there's open houses and they first sell owners. Well, not compensate brokers unless broker makes the first visit to the buyer. <laughs> if the buyer makes the first visit without the broker, buyer agrees to compensate the broker staying in the compensation below. Now we just covered that. I'm going to highlight that with the yellow market so they understand that. You can go to New York without them. That's great. Go for it. You're paying me if they don't pay for it. A lot of them, especially today, they're doing the threshold. If you didn't step over the threshold with them, you're not getting paid. Now, here's another little thing that I want you guys to understand with new homes. <clears throat> when you go to a new home, they're going to give you a form. It's a, like a... I don't want to say representation. It's not really that. It's just going to say, you brought the seller. You brought the buyer. And it says, yeah, I'm Jeff. I brought Susie, blah, 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 blah. They don't tell you. The fine print at the bottom says, it needs to be renewed every 30 days. And if you don't renew it in 30 days, it says their obligation is to tell your buyer that you are no longer necessary in this transaction and you're not getting paid. So make sure you understand that. Now, back in the day, a lot of them were really hardcore about it. But like Beezer, um, Pulte, um, probably Toll Brothers, are pretty good about it, not, not you know really sticking to it. But you guys, I would not fall into that trap. Make sure you read it and understand it. I had an agent of mine, took a, took a client to a new home. They were, had a built a property, took six months. He happened to call the, the uh, escrow company one day. He said, hey, the Banana Street house, what's going on with that? Oh, well, matter of fact, we're getting ready to close in two days. Oh, shit, nobody told me. Calls up the builder. Who are you? Well, I'm, I'm with the Johnsons. And I, I brought him. 
They don't have anything on file about you. What do you mean? I brought them in here and did this. Have you updated your your uh, representation? Well, no, I didn't need to. Well, the fine print says that, so you brought it to me. I look at it, I go, please tell me that you updated this every 30 days because it's been six months. Well, no, I didn't need to do that. You're not getting paid. What do you mean? You're not getting paid. I'm going to take it to an attorney. Please. Attorney says, here's what we can do. Write me a check for 5000 right now. Get on a retainer, and we're going to do everything we can to get you paid. He's not. Okay, they laughed at him. He's not getting paid. So please make sure you understand the new home. So Don't fall in that trap. So if you needed to renew that, what's what's involved with it? You just, just do the back, same form. Go, go, yep. go back to your buyers and say, hey, here's what's going on. I need to make sure that, you know, I need to be up to that. Does the buyer need to go with you? Uh, no, I just need to sign. Let's get a sign. Like I said, you guys, Pulte. I think we have please. to sign for that right now. Yeah, absolutely. Just, just guys, just get it updated. Look for it. Put in your calendar, day 28. I got two days left to get this thing signed. Right? Get it signed. So you got to update it every how long? 30, 60, or 90 days, or every 30 days. And generally, they're all 30 days. Yeah. And then you are no longer necessary in the transaction. That's what um, it was called. Um, kind of, uh, they treated it in real sense like shit. Um, we got bought out. Uh, yeah, can't give a name, but it was worse. Go ahead. Um, so this is about the one before about when we had to advise the council CBA attorney about when they want to pay more for a house. Yes, or anything about like that. Yeah, why? Why would we like? I I understand that like, we want to get them the best offer possible. Right. But why would we still have to advise them that to go to the attorney? And because say, you're the real estate professional. You know it's not smart to pay eighty grand more for a house. Okay. Oh, okay. Because here's what happens, you guys. Life happens. And true story. This happened in California. Guy bought a house. Uh, and and, the, and the, uh, it was smoking hot. Time, great great business, I should say. Great market. He paid $50,000 more for the house. Three months later, uh, his, somebody died in his family. He had to move to Ohio. I don't remember where it's at. So he went to sell the house. Well, guess it. By the time he went back, the market had dipped. And now... Not only did he not get his 50 grand back, but he had to put 50 on the table to get the home sold. So who do they blame when they do their own stupid shit? You. That's right, because you're the professional. You take, you know what you're doing. Because you didn't know it. You didn't tell him. Well, now I told him. He went to sell the property. Couldn't. So he was in the hole yeah. from, That's from right. the very extreme That's right. get -go. To the So the only thing that saved him was, is when the agent said, not didn't save him, save the agent, is when they went to court, she had a uh, a uh, uh, CMA where he signed that I almost worth this much. That saved him because she said he signed right so here. He signed, signed the house. appraisal. That's right. So he was aware of the current price, oh, yeah. and of course he signed the offer yep. for fifty plus. Paid fifty grand more. Yep. And oh, and but she had a deal that said, listen, this is what the house is worth, and you agreed to pay blank. And so at the end of saying, but guys, here's the here's the, the dirty secret. Whether you're right or wrong, it still has to be defended. You still have to go to court, attorney's fees, you still gotta get subpoenaed, you still gotta do all the shit to deal with it to go for it. So even if you're right, I mean you're all the way right, you still have to defend yourself, which is never that fun. So thank God for CNOs. That's right. For yeah. EO. So. Yes, he had you know helps, absolutely. You know, remember, you know it. That case right there, you don't know what you know. You know is not, hey, you know is I made a mistake and I'm stupid, not I willfully did something, right? You know, I come to you and say, so what did you do when they want to pay 50 grand more? All right, I said, congratulations, I'm going to make more commission. Well, no, I sent them an email that said, oh, by the way, I strongly recommend you speak with an attorney or somebody else. Hey, guys, this can happen anything. If, you, if somebody buys a home uh, and doesn't get the inspection done, right, they waive the inspection. I would still send them an email that said, on January 10th at 1 o'clock, uh, we spoke about this, and I strongly recommend you should not buy a house without an inspection. Right? Even though it's here, I got it here now. And I, and I can confirm it. Because you guys must hire an attorney, or can you defend yourself yeah, in cases like this? Yeah, you both. We have an attorney for some. Our, our corporate attorney will get involved, okay. uh, depending on what it is. But more importantly, you guys, is when you're sitting in front of the division, what did you do? Well, I did this and that. 
right? Because remember, guys, we're professionals. We're not realtors. We're professionals. They're the dumb public. I didn't know any better. Steven's a professional. Steven, how many sold home do you sold? Well, I sold one. Well, you're still a professional. You're better than I am. I'm stupid. I have no idea what's going on. You should have told me not to get a home inspection. Well, I did. I told you that one day. Remember, we were having two tacos and it was a lot of fun. And we were singing songs, holding hands. Oh, yeah, but that doesn't matter because I didn't know. I'm stupid public. You guys, I, I'm telling you, I've seen it. I have sat in the division and had the exact conversation. And they have said, this is Stephen is not this Stephen. He's the stupidest bastard I've ever known. He's not a professional. He should advise me. I had no idea what I was getting into. And then they go, all right, Stephen, you're guilty. $5,000 fine. And we might take your license and you're going to do 12 hours of C classes that don't count torture seats. And you got a, a mark in your file. Okay? All of it because they, he didn't wave off responsibility. That, that's right. That's right. You guys, today we are an easy, we're easy to sue. Okay? Because we don't keep track of anything. We wing it. We're having fun. <laughs> Skitting and scat. Okay? Instead of doing the right thing. You notice when you go to your doctor, they write everything down? Uh, the part, the, the client had gas in the room. Mm -hmm. They write it down. Right? They write everything down. What do we do? I got it right here. I don't know what I did yesterday, but I'll remember what I did five years ago. Remember, the air was lost. In You're making me want to get one of those portable cameras and just record every interaction <laughs> of every minute. I'll tell you what, man, it almost isn't a bad idea. Nobody can. You just have to remind them, hey, while well, you're getting no, just imagine. The, yeah. the, the, the client is ringing on the phone. Okay, buddy, come on. Yeah. Hey, see what's yeah. up. Yeah. I'm telling you. Man. You got it. Yeah. You're not being tempted to start doing that. They are your best friends. Until something happens. And then they had no idea how they hooked up. All right. So make sure you're doing new homes. Fire grease is full. So you send them all on that law. Um, uh, the mother broker shall be named for a procuring cause. Okay, the procuring cause. This is a procuring cause is a very difficult thing to, to prove. It sounds very simple to prove, but in, in a court law, it's very difficult to prove. Uh, procuring cause. And so just, you know, make sure they understand it. I would highlight this stuff. And I would go over and highlight it. Guys, because they need to understand what they're getting into. And if they say to you, uh, Stephen, I listen, I'm not comfortable with this. Listen, I can appreciate the fact you're not comfortable with it. I get it. But if you want to work with me, this is what we're going to do. And if you don't, I get it. I understand. Well, we're not going to do it. Okay. That's what I'm Don't go any further. Don't say, Stephen's got, he's got a nice beard. He's fun to be around. We'll just forget about this thing. We don't need this stupid form. Okay, because you're going to get your ass handed to you. Um, you are a current Nevada licensee. Fire means you work diligently. diligently. Most agents do not work diligent to locate a property except for the buyer. Fire agrees to negotiate. Be a strong negotiator. Here's where you can do the compensation. Fire agrees, compensation shall be paid pay the time of condition. <sighs> Come on, Jeff. Time of and as a condition of closing as followed. Now, we talked about the lawsuit, Billy. Really. Right now, on the MLS, you can get a percentage, whatever that commission is, that's in the, uh, uh, the MLS. By the way, when you get on the MLS sheet, <laughs> you guys, I realize that we're kind of jumping around here. Uh, this is all the one that's actually going to see what it looks like. Okay, this is just a new listing right here. Let's see what that is. Okay, so when you see a listing, this is on the MLS. Okay, so this is all the information, blah, 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 beautiful, yada, yada. Right here. Agent co op. This means the agent, the buyer's agent that brings in ready, willing, and able buyer is due to an percent commission on $545,000 sell, if that's what it closes at. Okay. Now, look at this little thing right. Oh, where's it at? It's not on there. You don't, you don't see it until you print. Oh, there it is. This thing's in the way. I don't see if I can get that. Let's 
See this right here? LVR deems information reliable, but not guaranteed. Okay? So, uh, this beautiful home has uh, 12 bathrooms and 52 bedrooms. Wait a minute, it's only got three and three. It's extremely reliable, but it's not a guarantee. The only thing that is a guarantee on this page is that right there. Well, kind of what we what matters the most to us. That's right. That's exactly right. But what's going to happen is you're going to have a buyer that looks at this and says, uh, if you pick something up, uh, I don't even know. No, no, with no rear, no, with no rear neighbors. Wait a minute. I bought the house. We're getting ready to move in. They're doing construction behind the house and they're starting to build a home down there. Well, you told me there's no neighbors. Well, I didn't know if they're building behind there. Well, it's right now there's not. It's deemed reliable, but not a guarantee. Okay? True story. Already right, sold house. Nobody behind it. Buyers from California came in. Oh, then you'll love this one. The wife used to be a real estate agent. One of the scariest things you ever hear. Oh, I used to be a real estate agent. Oh boy, here we go. They buy the house, they negotiate it, do all the stuff, no neighbors. They bring all their stuff from California. They start to move in. They look over the back wall. There's all the bulldozers and tractors. They're digging it up to build homes. The seller says, the new buyer says to the agent, what the hell is this? You told me there are no neighbors. He said, no, when I, you asked me, I asked the listing agent, we didn't know. Buyer beware. You, Mr. Buyer, are obligated to do the research if, do the research if you want. It's up to you to look, not me. Was it him on the form? Uh, this, this was just, no, this was just on a No, the buyer beware. There's a form. No, that, there's not a buyer in the form. We just know that the buyer beware. So, what did, the, what did the wife say? Well, Stephen, Jeff's got you know insurance. Just let's file a complaint and then the you know insurance will pay us out. We're good. So they filed a complaint at, with our agent at the division. The division take, by the way, when they fill out the, the form, okay, what happened? What's the complaint? You want to talk about a story. They can make a story that you never heard about. Okay? Seven pages of stories. Okay? So then they present theirs. We present ours. The division reviews it and says if we got a case or not. They presented theirs. We presented ours. The division looked at it and said, nothing to see here. Buyer beware. You should have known better. You should have done your due diligence. If you, if the vacant law was behind you and that was a concern, you should have looked it up. You should have went to Clark County, City of Las Vegas, and looked it up. Now, our agents That's followed us. Yep. That was yeah. Deal, right? yeah. The agent, but you know, yeah, there is a lot. But the agent should have said, when the, when the buyer said you, Gabe, yes. Gabe, what's, what's being built back there? You know, I don't know. But listen, here's the Clark County website. Here's the city of Las Vegas website. Please review it and see what you find. Gabe, you don't get on there and go, hey, I'm looking up there and nothing being built up there, bro. We're good. Move on. No. You give it to them and let them look at it. Did they look it up? I don't care. It's not my deal. I gave them the information. Remember, what's that? What's that line? You know, uh, be the source of the source, but not the source. Mm -hmm. So I gave them the information. I gave them the website. It says to look up. <clears throat> so, Gabe, what's crime like here? Zero crime. There's no crime in this area. Nobody ever gets hurt. No cars get stolen. It's an amazing place. Two days later, the car gets stolen. Gabe, uh, my Mercedes uh, 500 SL was stolen. What do you got in mind to replace it? What do you mean to replace it? Well, you said there was no crime here. Never do that. So what's the crime like in here, Gabe? Well, uh, here's the Las Vegas uh, Police Department. Look at their website because there's crime all over the valley. Right? But agents do that shit. Okay? Because they want to be... Don't do that. Be the source of the source, not the source. I'd say uh, take a look at this and you determine your comfort. That's exactly right. That's how they do it at the property management office that I was working for. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they have scripts for it and all. Oh, yeah. Guys, I don't need a script. Here's the side, look it up yourself. Right? Well, I want you to look it up. I'm not going to look it up. I, I might look it up and send it to them, but I'm not making a decision right. on your property that you're going to live in based on what you want to do, not me. I'll give so, you a direct link. Yeah. That's about it. That's it. That's exactly right. So, this is so we have one where. 
Uh, we had a, we actually lost a suit when I was at Prudential. Cost us one hundred twenty five thousand dollars. Our commercial agent, uh, Elaine Shut, wants to put a hair salon in a in a building in a strip mall, and the uh, agent says, "I talked to Susie at the uh, business business department. You're good. You're golden. Go get it done." She built the place out. Went down to get a license. And said, you "Can't put an hair salon in here." Wait a minute. My agent talked to Susie. We don't even have a Susie. I don't know who the hell he talked to. Boom, she sued us $125,000 paid out. Yeah. And that, guys, we are in a litigious society. We graduate 100,000 lawyers a year that are looking for shit to do, right? You see them every day. We got $15 billion. We got $12 billion. We got $100 million. We're getting them off the people. Oh, no, you don't need to work. It's only the insurance. That's why our insurance is through the roof. Okay. Here's where you want to put... What you gonna do, Lily? Back to you. This is just my thought. This is Jeff, not the broker. Jeff, not the manager. Jeff, an agent with you guys. I think what's gonna happen in the future, not this year, not next year, whenever it happens, buyers agents are gonna work for five thousand dollars. Like a flat fee? Yep. You're no longer gonna get twelve. You're not only get two percent commission, five percent. You're only gonna you're gonna make five thousand dollars. That's just my, that's me, that's Jeff, not the broker. So here you would put your, your commission, you know, uh, Mr. Buyer, I work for two and a half percent commission. I work for 3% commission. I'll show you any properties around, but if it commissions less than 2%, 3%, whatever it is you pick, I expect you to make the difference up. That's what it's for. You can come down here and put, uh, you can put that there, or you can put right here, I work for $12,000. Anything under that, you'll pay the difference. Now, most agents don't do that. They say, because it says right here, buyer authorizes the broker to accept the compensation offered by the seller. Excuse me. For the seller broker, which compensation shall be granted against the compensation owed to the buyer. I would agree to accept whatever is paid, is what we're saying right here. You're going to pay the difference. Now, you guys, you don't, you don't have to say I work for 12000 You don't have to say I work for 3%. Except whatever comes your way. So the whole idea of this form was, it was designed for, I work for 3%. If there's a 2% listing, I'll show it to you. I just expect you to make up the 1% one, the 1 difference. That's what this form was designed for, okay, back in the day. In other states, it's mandatory that this form gets done. Our state is, it's coming, and our attorneys, LNBR, uh, LBR, and NAR strongly recommend we start getting these done, but that's the deal, please. So you're saying like that sentence that says um, broker to accept compensation offered by seller or seller's broker. Yeah. If you're only going to accept that, yeah. then you don't have to check any of those check. Yeah, you don't have to write. I would still put something in here. I would put 2% or whatever. And just say, listen, I'm not going to accept. I'll accept whatever they can. And, and there's, a, there's, there's those lines on the back here that you can put in here right there. You can put agents willing to accept whatever the buyer's co-op is and accept that. Right, because but you guys, here's the thing: what are you worth? Right, but if you give subpar service, if you don't answer the phone, you're not a strong negotiator. You don't, you're not available when they need you. Which is, and I go into my class I'm teaching number five. This is four, right? So I'm teaching that class next week, next Wednesday. Buyer broke the class, or uh, I'm working with a buyer job accepted, and I go into more depth about that, but. Here's where you can put that if that's it, if you wanted to do that right there. You can put it here at this one. Right? You can also get out. I just put on these. Either party can accept, cancel this deal within 24 hours. It written on us. Because I had one guy call me one time. The agent said, I hate this guy. I never want to work with him. I'm going to punch him in his stupid looking face if I work with him anymore. The guy called me and said, I want the agent. I said, the agent doesn't want to work with you. He goes, yeah, but I have a buyer's broker agreement. She has to work with me. I said, oh, I can appreciate that, but she's not one. Okay, so it does happen, right? I mean, you see, guys, you see all kinds of crazy shit for real estate, trust me. So, uh, yes, you can put whatever you want. Like I said, I would put something in there, 2%, two and a half, whatever it is, and then say, that's not accept whatever, whatever's off. And there's also a form to get out of this as well that you could use. Uh, just for compensation, buyer, buyer agrees to pay the broker. This is your transaction fee. Because we're going to put your transaction fee based on whatever that number is. It's a $500,000 home, it's $600 for that. Okay. 
So I'm not going to go too into there. Uh, buyer agrees to pay the compensation within 30, 90 days of termination, whatever that looks like, you guys. I mean, if you're going to do six months, then do it six months, right? But the, I'm not going to go over a lot of this, you guys. But just make sure you're you're paying attention to this form. It's vitally important. You've got to know what's going on right here, okay? Uh, mediation, equal housing, I'll show them any house you want. Attorney's fees, let's see what else. You know, we're going to advertise, you know, buyer knowledge and reach property to be sent. I've been marketing through virtual tour. And that's what I like about this line, <clears throat> Mr. Buyer, you're not my only client. I'm going to show this same house to somebody else. And if they buy it, that's that's there's no fault to me because I've showed it to other people. And that's what that line means. Um, mediation before litigation, attorney's fees, damage cap. This is only Nevada law. Now, here's the thing that I get a lot of, you guys. So, yes, I see this, and it drives me up the wall. You're working with Susie uh, from California. Susie's dad in California is a real estate agent. And he wants to micromanage the whole transaction. Uh, well, Susie, uh, in California, we don't allow transaction fees. In California, we don't do this. And then he wants to call you and ride you up and down the street. And so my question I always say to the agent is, yeah, is, is the dad on the duty zone? Is the dad on the contract? Well, no, no, it's just Susie. Good. You have no obligations to the dad. As soon as he calls you, you say, you are not party to this contract. Go away. I want you to send me the, con the contract. No. If Susie wants to send it to you, she can. Don't call me again. Because what do agents want to do? They want to spill their guts. The dad calls them. Well, what are we going to do? She had a bankruptcy. She's doing this shit. Yeah, she got bank child support. Dad didn't know any of this shit. And then what do they say? You told my dad that I didn't know. Well, yeah, but he was calling me. I figured you knew. Well, you didn't have it in writing. Don't do that. Okay? Remember who your party is. That's it. And if anybody else calls you, because you're going to get it. Well, my friend's a realtor in Ohio, and she wants to talk to you about this agreement. No, how they. That's right. I'm not talking to her. She's not part of the deal. Well, I'm going to spill my guts and tell her everything about it. Nevada law. It's only Nevada law. Well, Jeff, my dad's in California. Uh, my cousin in Ohio. My cousin, I don't give a shit what they're doing in Ohio. This is Nevada law. This is the entire contract. Make sure they understand what they're getting into. And again, you guys, get this sign right here. That is one of the most important things, is your broker signs it. Everything I tell you guys is because it's happened. Hand to God, one of my agents had a listing for a year. A year! She had a buyer's broker's room because they were going to sell and they were going to buy. Beautiful. A year. That was a really great house. From the front door, seven different, literally seven different floors. And you could see them from the front door. When you walked in and went, what the? And the lady, the owner's like, man, I love it. I think it's great. Everybody's walked in, freaks out. And we had, we did where we had a broker open and everybody made comments. Hey, everybody said the floor's got to go. And the owner loved it. Anyways, agent didn't up selling the house. They, they dropped the listing from her once it didn't sell. She had a buyer's market room. They sold that house with another agent and they bought a $600,000 house. She had a buyer's market room inside. I'm like, oh, thank God you did that. Send it to me. One year later, she sends it to me. I haven't signed it. God, I'm kidding me, girl. Seller calls me. Who bought? She said, I, he goes, I understand that I have a buyer's broker's agreement. I said, well, yeah, you have a buyer's broker's agreement. Whether He goes, yeah, but it hasn't been fully executed. Thank you. I said, good luck. Walk away. I'm like, why didn't you get me to sign that? Well, I had a lot going on that day. I had two tacos, and the puppies were calling on me, and I was busy. Uh -huh. Well, you were so busy, you just got yourself out of you know, at the time, they had to be, I think it was a 3%, $600,000. What was that? 20 grand? Yeah, 20, 30 grand. Yeah. Yep, yeah, she was too busy. She had me sign it. 
So being too busy costs her about 50 grand. That's right. All she had to do was do it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That guys, happens every day. Please. Um, so for the transaction fee, what would you put there? Because, you know, it, just, it depends on, like, hey, what it's. Right. So well, I mean, they're going to tell you, listen, I can afford 500000 up to 500 So they put that down there. Oh, okay. Because I didn't know if you like if you could put like additional notes. Okay. Depends on what it's sold. I, I would. You know what they're gonna. You know what they're what they're limits. Oh, okay. Uh, we're working with. Hey, I can afford five hundred thousand. So put that in there. If they buy over, then you can you can buy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just it's just a lot to know that there's a transaction Guide, guideline. That's the biggest thing. We just want them to know that, you guys. And there's a transaction fee for the this the listing and the buyers. Correct. So one yep. for each side. Yep. Because okay. we are liability on both sides. We got liability on all sides of it, guys. Gotta make sure you know that. Okay. Okay, we got 45 minutes. <laughs> and I will tell you this, you guys, and you guys are probably gonna realize it. I don't go through every line of the book. I can give you real world shit to gossip that goes on in this business. I've been in, I've seen it. Come on! Damn, dude. The frick. You know what's funny? I remember when computers came out for the most part, and it took 45 minutes to do a deal. And you're like, man, see how fast that was? That took 45 minutes, man. And now if it doesn't do it in two seconds, you're kicking it off the table. <laughs> okay, we were- Battle of modems, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember the fax machine came out, guys. It was like magic. Wait a minute. It rolled out of it. It put it in words? What the? And then you put it in your dash your card, and be gone in about 20 minutes. You're in the business. All right, first agreement. We are, make sure you get the most updated one. This should be like a brand new one. Residential, who that's probably meant. Third year, right there, 21. There should be a new one. Why don't you control F and just put the what you want to find? Well, I'm, I'm not that fancy. No, just press control F. And then just type uh, what exactly what you want to find. Uh, I think we're good. Yeah, I'm here good now. Yeah, I'm gonna, that's I do think old ways. I know how to do it. <laughs> that's why I didn't want to hit that button earlier, right man. If I hit this, it would screw me up. All right, here's the purchase agreement. There it is. So uh, we kind of touched on date. Remember, we have a beginning and end. A lot of this stuff could, will be auto populated to you guys when you're when you if you expect you load up your form. Get a lot of populated, a lot of it. Date, buyers, who they are, the property address, city of Las Vegas, Henderson County, Clark, zip, APN number. Make sure the APN number is right. We have sold a neighbor's house before. It's not as much fun as it sounds. <laughs> I was working at Keller Williams at the time, and we had a, uh, it was one of the short sellers were big, and we had a uh, team of guys. Uh, I was just working there. I wasn't managing the time. And they had a team of guys that go out and clean the place out when it's when they, they're taking it over. Uh, you know, it was 1660 Apple Street, number A. They went to 1660 Apple Street, B. Gutted the entire uh, condominium. The buyers came, uh, the owners came home. The house was completely gutted. Everything. Clothes, furniture, food, everything was thrown away. It was the wrong house. There was one next door. Yeah. How much that cost? Yeah. Needless to say, it cost a lot. Yeah, it cost a lot to, to, to for pain and suffering. And they had to get all guys close, everything. So you ended up working in their favor. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> working in their favor. Always check the APN number. So what I used to do when I want to listen, I would I would give one of them, okay, here's here's the contract. Uh 112, uh, 706. Uh, 1501. Yep. Okay, good. Make sure we get it right. Because it does happen. But we don't want, we don't like selling that's somebody else's house. Uh, a buyer, a buyer does or does not intend to live in the property. Ask the question, you guys. It's, it's important to a lot of people. You're going to have people that say, I want somebody that's going to enjoy my house and raise their family. Okay. It's a commodity. It's no longer a home. Okay. But you're going to get them. Oh, I want, you know, because you're going to go in the house. Little Stevie at yeah. uh, at four and little Stevie and uh, right, and they want somebody to live and enjoy it really good. And at the end of the day, I don't give a shit. But you should put down what it is, okay? Because it does mean something to people. 
I'm not having what people saying, I want some living in, and I won't accept an investor's offer. I've had that, I've had that. Literally happened, okay? Uh, earnest money deposit, but you put your EMB here. Is present and present this offer, or to be wired within 30 days, or <laughs> to be wired within uh, one day of fully executed agreement. Okay, so today we wire a lot. Back in the day, guys, we used to give them checks, okay? They just would hang on to checks. Don't hang on to a check. And we had one of our agents one time that had a credential. Back in the day, agent took uh, the check, $2,000, EMD, put it in her car, and the car got broken into that. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Byer, funny story for you. Yeah, yeah, I put your check in my uh, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, it got robbed last night. Oh, yeah, they'll probably take all your money in your account. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll write you a check for the rest. Okay, don't do shit like that, you guys. Wire everything on this wire. Is there an additional deposit? Guys, I don't know that there needs to be an additional deposit today. A lot of people think it makes it look good. Okay. So I'm going to give $5,000 $5, of this money. I'm going to give another $20,000, but it's not going to be, it will not be considered part of the MD because I think it makes it look better. I don't know if it makes it look better. Who cares? Right? Just get the deal done. So I would put zeros, you know, guys, even if you don't have. This is contingent upon buyer qualifying for a new loan. Make sure you fill this out, FHA conventional loan, whatever that is. And this is where you're going to put the uh, the balance of what minus the, the, uh, the, uh, definitely, that's where your balance is going to go. The day let's see. So here, let's do this. So let's do this. And the other buying in post that's almost negotiable, right? Yeah. Ah, uh, what is it? Negotiable, the earnest money deposit. Yeah, really, it shouldn't be. I mean, no, he shouldn't. By the you delay. can, yeah. I mean, I will tell you this I'm a listening agent. You send me an offer over that says I want five thousand dollars, and you're going to give it, you're going to give two, your offer's going on the back side. Okay. And because I talk to my, my son, I'm going to say, So we got an agent here, uh, and a buyer, obviously not too committed. Uh, they don't want to put the proper money in me down when we got two other offers, right? If it's my only offer, I might. Count you and say no, five thousand dollars to be deposited. So two hundred thousand dollar home. So and then you can get the earnest money deposit back if you wish to instead of just applying a. So two hundred thousand dollars, you guys, on a FHA home. So let's do this. So we're gonna put zero here. Zero. This is the agreement is FHA. We know on an FHA loan, guys, at two hundred thousand dollars is three and a half percent. Five hundred percent, seven thousand dollars. Okay. Now, I know that if I take seven thousand, even though I know the numbers, I always just do my calculator anyways. Minus seven thousand. That's one hundred ninety-three thousand. That's whoops. That's what I'm. Let's do that right there. One ninety-three thousand. That's the balance after I pay my down payment, okay? Here, this is where the, remember, so I, I gave them 2,000. My down payment is 7,000. Take 2,000 from five, there's where my five is gonna go, 5,000. So now I know that these numbers add up. 2,000, that makes it 195 plus five, Makes it 200. Make sure the numbers add up. That's the one thing I see a lot of you guys is that the numbers don't add up. So make sure you're doing that. I wouldn't get too because I wouldn't get too wrapped up with. Uh, and there are some assumable loans today, okay? So they are happening, but don't get caught up with uh, different things. Uh, I put it in the wrong spot. Here. I'm sorry. My bad. There. Don't have that's a promise right now. I'm not going to do a promise right now. If you guys get in any of that kind of uh, suitables, speak with your broker or your, or your team leader or somebody that knows what's about it. Don't get caught up in that. But the biggest thing I'm going about here, you guys, is make sure these numbers add up. Because I see them today, a lot of them don't add up. So make sure they add up, okay? That's one of the most important things. Make sure the numbers add up. And you guys can do it conventional. If it's 5% down on 200,000, 
plug the numbers in and, and subtract it. Just remember the one thing I see a lot of is this. What is the final balance after the down payment? This is what they're going to ultimately borrow from the bank. Does everybody understand? Good? Okay. Make sure they initial. We get here, initial. By the way, guys, be very careful highlighting when they need to sign an initial. Because what happens is, I see them, because what happens with a lot of agents is they'll highlight it, they'll send it over to Stephen, they don't explain it to him. Hey, Stephen, man, initial and sign all the spots I highlighted. All right, man. And then Stephen goes back there and says, I didn't. Why did I sign that? Well, Jeff told me to initial in all these spots. He highlighted it for me. So he took away my ability to make an educated decision because he said, just sign an initial in the highlighted spots. Don't do that. Don't do anything where you guys send over the purchase agreement and then go, please sign a date and we're good. Explain it to them. Now, when I'm doing my, my, my buyer's presentation, I give them, Gabe, a blank copy of an RPA and say, please read this at your leisure so when we go to make an offer, we can jump right into this and get it done. I'm still going to go over the highlights of it, right? I'm not going to read every single line, but I'm going to highlight things that I think are good, okay? But don't just send it over. Loan application, a lot of times, you guys, this should be done, okay? The application is done. If not, three days, a week, whatever that looks like. All I'm saying is within within business days of acceptance, buyer agrees, so I'm going to complete the loan application to the lender. Please, if you're going to work with a buyer, have that shit already done. I don't, I will say this, you guys. Epic, especially in my office, Dave Gonzalez, Epic Mortgage in my office, he goes above and beyond to qualify your client. If he qualifies them, they're going to get the loan. Today, there's too many lenders that give a loan approval and haven't got anything done yet. I mean, we had one that canceled the other day, 45 days, and canceled the day of closing because their, uh, their, uh, um, their uh, what's it called? When, uh, their ratio was off. Their income ratio was off. That's the first thing you look at. How did that happen? How did we get to the very end? And the loan, their, their ratio to debt to ratio, income ratio is off. That's because the lender just said, approve it. We've got plenty of time to go through it. Guess what it did? Cost the buyer $5,000. And when that happens, who does buyer blame? You. But I'm not your lender. Yeah, but you should have protected me. But I, I didn't do the loan. Yeah, but you're a professional. I'm the stupid public. You should have told me to make sure I do that. Okay, so make sure you're looking at that. Who is that again? Pardon? Who is that you were talking about? The lender? Yeah, the lender screwed it up. Yeah, no, who who is the guy? The guy's name? Oh, Dave Gonzalez at Epic. He's in my office. Yeah, Gonzalez. He's in when you get on my Facebook, you'll see him in there. Oh. Dave. Dave Gonzalez, great guy. Charity does the same thing. She's she's in this office. So she's good too. But I know when Dave, because I've known Dave forever. When he approves your clients, it's done. Because what's going to happen, you guys, is you're going to have a buyer. Hey, Mr. Buyer, who's your lender? Uh, well, I've got Larry at curbside lending. Man, he's great. Okay, well, what's the success rate in closing deals? Oh, he's probably about 20%. Oh, really? So 20% of the time, I'm going to get paid. Yeah! I, I love it. Right? Mm -hmm. You said you were in uh, IT? So, oh, uh, software. So. Software. Okay, so let me ask you this. You got paid salary probably, whatever, right? You got paid every two weeks, probably. Everything you got paid based on the shit that you did, correct? So if you went to work every day, you did your sales, and you did everything, you got paid, right? Based on you. In real estate, 10 to 12 people have to do with their job, or you're not getting paid. All it takes is one person not to do their job, and you're not getting paid. Why it's so important. The team you surround yourself with, get the shit done. And that's why you need to educate your clients as well. Like you said, just ask them that question. What is their success rate? Yep. Yep. Um, and then sell yep. your your circle. Right. Be okay, so close. you guys have heard of uh, 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 Rocket Lending, right? You've heard of Rocket Lending. There's a couple more of them. You know their success rate? Closing? I didn't do that. 
You know what the success rate in closing transactions is? 30%. I don't know what the 30% of the time you're going to get paid if you use that. They're in Chicago, they don't give a shit about you. You're never going to talk to them. You're never going to get on the phone. They might email you back, maybe. Uh, the big, the big boys, uh, Ameri uh, uh, American, uh, not American, what's it called? Wells Fargo, DMA, those, what's their success rate? 55%. They're looking for the top people only. 55% you're going to get paid from them. Epic, which is CMG's, their parent company, their success rate is about 90%. Follow somebody you're going to get paid on. Can I give you guys, that lender cost everybody in that deal the deal. Okay? Do you think the seller's pissed off when the buyer cancels the day of it? I've moved out. I've had my tenant move out. I've got my stuff in a car. We're going to Ohio, and the deal just fell through. Do you think they're upset? 100%. They want somebody's guts, and all they're entitled to is the EMD. And then what does the buyer say? I'm not, I'm not giving you the EMD. But you've defaulted on everything. Yeah, but I'm still not signing off on it. You guys, it's a it's a crazy thing. What, uh, what did you say um, Epic's uh, success rate is? 90. 90%. 90%. Especially when Dave used Dave. Dave gets it done. And then her charity was saying that she can close very fast as yeah. well, like 17, 18 yeah. months because yep. her normal yep. track record. Yep. You can close it quick. Yeah. And like I said, Dave close. Dave, drag, Dave wants more information from your clients right up front. And a lot of people do this shit, a lot of your buyers. Okay, Mr. Byer, let's do this. I want you to lend me $500,000. I don't want to feel nothing out, guys. I don't want to be bothered. For 30 years, by the way, I got 30 years of default. Would you do that either? Hell no, I wouldn't do that. Good, he's not going to do it either. I mean, guys, it's a simple thing. People get pissed. I'm, you want them to lend you $500,000 for 30 years to default. And no, you're pissed they want they no want mother to yeah, yeah, they want you to get your mom won't do it. Okay? They want your tax they want your tax return. This son of a bitch, I can't believe he wants my tax return. Because again, it goes back to educating them about the process. Absolutely. Especially if they're new to this. Yep. Or if they had a really shitty experience in the past. Oh, like yeah. this Absolutely. is how we do it, and this is how we can help yep. this be successful and pain, yep. painless for you. Uh, it's as much as possible. If you don't want to go like Being a foreigner, pretty much in a country that is either paying 20% interest or cash, yeah, you pretty much everybody that knows who would be your financier. Yeah. I, to me, it's just pretty straightforward here in America the way that credit works and yeah. stuff. Uh, like, honestly, financing a house for 30 years is unheard of. Yeah. Like, the luck is with all the government, you're helping to bet a five year plan. Yeah. What are, what are they paying? What are they paying real estate agents? 1%? Yeah, you know, if yeah. you pretty much just men, you probably just mention it. Because yeah. let's just say if you finance through a government entity or stuff, I charge you less, but I know I'm gonna get a kickback for the government. Like this, yes, don't use the word kickback. No, no, no. <laughs> Never say kickback. No, not here. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you understand know it's the same government yeah. uses the word because only they are allowed. Yeah. You are not allowed to use it, but the God, guess what? Uncle Sam is allowed to, yeah, to do yeah, so. Yeah. I mean, that's a scenario. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, there's a lot of ways. Yeah. I had one of my agents that was from Russia. A nice, really nice lady. She went back here to get married. And she said, Jeff, listen, in Russia, this is the way it is. You pay every day if you want something done. She said, I don't care what it is. You want to get, you want to get, she was getting married on the weekend and nobody's around. I'm on my way. I, I need this scenario. It's closed. All right, we're open. She said, I don't, you know, she said it is what it is. Well, you know what it is. I'm not saying where you're at. But she said in Russia, that's the way it is. Oh, no, in Argentina, it's actually worse than that. Oh, really? Right. Yes. Okay. But to the point that now they, they just found out uh, an operator of a nightclub, somebody else wanted to buy the property. I forgot for what. The, the nightclub owners said, no, this is my spot. The thing is, the offers were good and stuff, and he was, time was in the SO for him. So he gave the realtor, see that offer that they put before I did, because legally they abide by day. Right. Here is a 50 grand, burn it. For 50 grand on the pocket, guess what? It got burnt. And so they they found everything out because the realtor ended up moving elsewhere because of the inflation go happening and stuff. Right, right. I think it moved to Uruguay, so just like right next door. And so now, yeah. uh, well, they... 
the agents like I, I'm out. Yeah. Like I, he invested in uh, Punta del Este, nice vacation spot. He's doing huge on his yeah. dating. And now the now uh, the owner of the nightclub is actually taking all the heat for that. So yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know how they prove that he gets. Makes sense. Just like you said, guys. It's, it's a good round. But the moral of the story, guys, find a great lender. Find your success rate. How often do you close deals? Are you going to be Johnny on the spot? If I call you, are you going to answer your phone? If I email you, are you going to email me back? Because guys, it's not a, my hand, hand of God. My son-in-law, he used David Gonzalez to buy their first house. And he, uh, they got it done with her. He was like moaning and bitching to me. Well, Jeff, we had to pay a you know a thousand dollars this, and I should have, and you know my lender would have done that. Okay, whatever. So they sold that house with the buy a new one, a more expensive house. The lender kept giving him for fucking excuse me, for 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 weeks. You're qualified, babe. We got you. We're gonna get this thing done. We're supposed to close nothing. The seller is about ready to say, "Listen, I'm done with you guys. I'm out of here." So this went on for like three weeks. They kept saying, you're approved. We're going to close in a week. And the seller said, if you don't get this thing closed in three days, we're, we're taking it, we're taking your EMD. And, and they put down like 20 grand. We're taking your EMD and we're moving on. And so I said, Mason, take your laptop. Because the guy would be calling back. Go to his office, sit in the lobby and work there. You're going to work there for three days. And that's exactly what they did. They finally got the loan done. And I said, now Take you know how to use that, right? Take the pillow. That's what I said. You're working from his office for the next three days. He took his laptop, went to his office lobby, sat down, and worked there for two for three days. I don't think the guy later came out and said, let's get this thing done. I'm staying here until we're done. They almost lost the house. So appraisal contingencies, buyers all going to purchase property, make sure. So, so generally what happens here, guys, is appraisals are going to be about 20 days. It's kind of a normal number, and, and loan contingencies are going to be about 28 days, okay? Now, if you are going to try to change these dates here and here, talk to the lender, right? I see the need to here for five days. That means if you don't get the appraisal done in five days, let's say you get it done in day six, and you offer $200,000, and the appraisal came back at 180, guess what you're doing? Your buyer's paying that 200000 for that house. Because we already passed up the loan, but we're done now. That's irrelevant. Your offer was two hundred thousand. That's what you're paying. Well, guess what? The lender said, "I can't afford to pay two hundred thousand dollars, one hundred eighty thousand dollars." Now you have to fall back to this, which should be twenty-eight days. It's generally not a good number. But don't guess. Extend it if you make it longer. If the lender says you, I can get it done in ten days. Make it fifteen days. Okay. Can you guys, go extravagant put 60? Yeah, well, I wouldn't go that because if I'm, again, I'm a listing agent, I'm looking at 60 days, I'm saying you're on drugs. Okay. There's something wrong. Okay? You Please. Said, you said 20 and, and 28. Yeah. So okay. this should be about 20 and 28. Okay. Oh, it's right here. 17. Yeah. I, I would, again, guys, I always give a little bit more because I want to hedge my bet. I know real estate agents all the time, you guys, that aren't doing nothing aren't paying attention to it, it comes up. I had one of my agents one day put an offer on a property for a lady, a uh, seller, a buyer, I'm sorry. And the buyer said, okay, so here should, uh, no, not applicable, applicable. Uh, where's it at? Right here, due diligence. This due diligence should be anywhere from 10 to 15 days. And guys, the due diligence, so you know, that's your get out of jail card. For any reason, in that 10 to 15 days, your buyer can get out of that transaction and get their EMD back. Okay? They're driving through the property on day seven, and they two leaves blow across the street, and it scares them that you get out of the transaction. Okay? 10 to 15 days. Now, Jeff, as a listing agent, if you put 15 days, I'm counting you at 10. But you guys don't care about the listing agent. They care about protecting my client. So you're going to put 10, 15, 12, 13, whatever days, and then pay attention to them days, okay? Do not, not pay attention to them days. Get on them, put them in your calendar, get an alert, make sure you pay attention to that. Uh, so I have one of my agents one time, I work with an investor. The investor says, how many days do you do this one? Zero. I said, why'd you put zero? Well, that's what the investor wanted. I said, did you explain to him what goes on? She said, I'm an investor. You're a stupid agent. 
I know what I'm doing. I know what's going on. Put zero days. I said, do you realize right now when you put zero and it's been accepted, they can't get out of the contract for any reason now. They were paying cash. So there is no appraisal contingency. There is no loan contingency. That's asking for trouble. 100%. And I said to my agent, why did you put zero? Well, that's what she wanted to do. I said, what you do in that instance to say, listen, I, I get it. You're smarter than I am. I'm a stupid agent. We're going to put at least five days. Because something could happen in that time frame and you're not going to get out. And what happened if she got with his vision? So let me He's tell still you. Bottom of the line. Okay. Right. Well, your client said put zero in there. What did you do? Yeah. I said, I can't. Well, I love it. No, what I did is I emailed her and said, I strongly recommend you don't put zero days in there because you can't get out of it if something happens. So I put ten, I put five days. Okay. So they're gonna say, okay, good job. At least you're being you're being proactive, being smart about it. You guys, that's the other thing about investors. They think we're all a bunch of idiots and they're the smartest person on the planet. Okay, so just remember that. So again, you guys, I always did, I said I always did 10. Uh, 10 days for me was the only thing I would accept. Because uh, I was listening to you. I would not accept 15 days. So, 10 days is fun. Um, property inspection. Make sure that your clients are going to do an inspection. Do not, not let them not do an inspection. That was a lot of knots. Do not, not let them do an inspection. Okay. If they say, I don't want to do an inspection, that's great. Sign off on this sheet. Because we have a sheet that says, I, I choose not to do an inspection. And then email them. On January 10th at 2 o'clock, we talked about it. I strongly recommend that you get a home inspected for your own safety and knowledge. Uh, and I told you to speak with an attorney and your uh, CPA to make sure. Please confirm this. And now I got a record of it. As well, because I got a sign sheet, but I've also got this. You guys, you got to protect yourself. Okay, trust me. Uh, all those basic says they're going to look at all the conditions. And remember, guys, buyer beware. The buyer has the price to, 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 to do their own diligence. Right, kid, if they say to you, Gabe, what's going on behind me? I don't know, but here's the Clark County website. Check there, you know. Do some research on your own. Something going to be built? I don't know. I'm not an expert in that. I don't sell that. So I don't know what's going to be happening. Listen, if you guys, if, if you're in a uh, uh, a housing track and there's a vacant lot behind it, what are the odds that somebody's going to build some home set, right? Pretty high. Pretty high. So I would say, listen, check it out. Look what you see. Buyers ran to cancel. This is through their due diligence. Fair to cancel all rejections. Buyers shall be deemed to waive. So this, this says automatically waived. If they don't, if, if you don't do anything about the due diligence, it's automatically goes away. Right? So if you, if there's a problem, let's say you find mold. <clears throat> it's day eight. You find mold. And they agree they're going to do some mold in the marine. Not remediation. remediation. You say, okay, great. That's enough. By the way, I want you to extend the due diligence for another two weeks while they're doing the mobile remediation. Because once the due diligence is over, it's gone, you guys. They're not going to come back and go, oh, I know you're silly. <laughs> you silly realtor. We'll give you two more weeks. It's fine. No, once it's gone, it's gone. So make sure you're doing that. Also, if you're doing that same situation, let's say, again, we found mold, we got extended two weeks. Guess what nobody ever does? They never extend these dates either. These dates still all stay the same. Now, not every time you have to do it, but if it's going to hold a property of two weeks because they've got to take drywall down and all this shit, that's going to mean something because an inspector's not going to do an inspector when his kitchen store apart, right? I got to extend that 10 days, right? But what I like is do they don't even think about it and they let it go and then it catches them. Oh, the, the, the expect the expired? Hey, 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 funny story. Uh, I was having tacos, and they were a lot of fun. And I was playing with my puppies, and I forgot to extend it. Hey, 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 hey. Can we extend it 20 more days? Not going to happen. I had one of my agents one time. They sent over a, uh, she was a listing agent. They sent over a purchase agreement that had, I think it was zero days on the loan contingency or the price. No, I'm sorry. One of them. I don't know which one. She writes a counter offer that says due diligence to be 10 days or loan contingency to be 20 days, whatever it was. I don't know which one it was. Thinking she's doing a great thing. 
I said, let me ask you a question. Are you the buyer's agent? Oh, no, no, no. I'm the listing agent. I said, so who's your fiduciary duty to? Uh, your seller? I said, guess what just happened? You just armed your seller. Let's say that that client cancels now on day nine. And they originally had zero days in there. And now they cancel on day nine because you gave them 10-day due diligence. Guess what you just did? Who'd you harm? You harmed your seller. Your seller can come back and go to the division and say, my seller's at my buyer, my agent's a ding that, and I want to sue and I want a license. Okay? So you got to think about what you're doing. That's when they can claim up to three times the damage. Three and a half times the cost. Yep. That's probably would not fall into this one. Yes. That's it. When you go to the vision, there's no tell. So it's not a cash purchase where it's financed. Sell a property. Is this property contending with property? Selling. Do they have to sell a property to buy? Make sure they understand that. Do not miss that. Mr. Buyer, do you have to sell your house you don't have to buy? Yes. Look that box. And then there's another form as well. So make sure you guys are doing that, okay? This particular one, we're not doing that. Any additional comments? Oh, I like this one. Pictures, personal property, or, uh, or, uh, or, or what do you want to come with? All these pictures, including a lot of material, that's real for you, but a lot of fans, log, great power, and the thing that's being done, super, cash for an antenna, sorry, this is for everything. This is for a cool spot, it's good. Mailboxes, tree shrubs, tree shrubs. They've taken the trees out. They've taken the trees out. That's on the test. You, you, you guys did it. Yeah. You get that on the test. Yeah. The rose bush, yeah. right? Bobby's uh, prized roses. They took them. Hope you got it right. Water, salt, purifiers. Make sure if they, if they, if they, if the appliances are stained, call them out. Don't say all appliances. Now, built in right way state. Uh, stove stays, okay. Refrigerator, washing machine, and dryer. Those can come and go. If they are going to stay, please make sure you put model 2506, serial number, da da da, stainless steel refrigerator to stay. Uh, GE profile, uh, washing machine, and dryer, a model number 75. Make sure you put that. Don't say all appliances, call them out. If there's a chandelier in the dining room, Chandelier in the dining room to be conveyed at the end of at, uh, at no cost for the end of the, end of the blah, at close of escrow. Don't leave it to chance, right? Everybody's on that, but all appliances. What does that mean? Toothbrush? My my toothbrush on appliance, my hair dryer now. What are we doing? Right? That's lazy, is what that is. So put it in there. I'm also working on my post licensing right now. All right, you made it sound that it's so easy not to mess up in here and just lazy days all about. No, it's very easy to screw up. It's extremely easy to screw up. I see it every day, people screwing up. No one, because they're lazy. Because I mean, it's everything like, well, for what I've seen, I'm, when I've been doing it on property management, it, everything is in your face. It, yep. You just got to take time. That's right. You got to take your time, guys. The, so once you guys are, once you've been licensed for a year, you can take CE classes at the division at a hearing. You should go do it. Uh, you can get three hours of CE credit. You should go down and watch it and watch the nonsense. And you guys, agents all day long get in trouble, not trying to get in trouble. You're like, how did you do it? Well, I just wanted to help, you know, the transaction. I, I wanted to be the, you know, trying to help her on the spot. And then they're costing their license. I mean, you guys got to be really careful. Opening escrow. You know, you know, you pick, you know, we, we obviously, whoops, we, we, come on, yeah, rock, title, title, whoever it is, whoops, well, title, T, 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 whoever it is, I just going to be closed on, whatever it is. Guys, just give them plenty of time, uh, but you got to be careful. Don't do 60 days. Generally, FHA is going to be about 45 days. Uh, most deals can be done in about 35 days, but count them out, okay? Saturday and Sundays are included. So make sure you understand that Saturday and Sundays are included in this. So calendar days. Calendar days, not business days. Good, good point. Okay? Um, deposit of EMD, and I'm glad you just said that. EMD is business days, not calendar days. So if you get a deal on Friday, it gets accepted. 
you have one day to open escrow. Business days. That Monday, you need to open escrow. Okay. Is that the only one that is? That's business pretty day? much, I think, one of the only ones that's business days. Because so the thing is, as you go on different type of loans, they all have like their fine print letter on days and. Yeah, just make sure you're, like I said, uh, again, EMD and all those business rental agreements count. Count the days out when you can the number. Guys, never, okay, so remember, when, when is uh, when is Thanksgiving? The Thanksgiving or 28th. Is it the 28th? No, no, no. no, no. It's the 5th, isn't it? 3rd. 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 Okay. Thursday. So if you know that you've got a closing and you're putting an offer in, don't close this week. Okay. Don't close that week. Do it before or after. Because what happens, you guys, is you pick, okay, we'll close on the 24th. What if they went to Reno with a family? Everybody's closed on the 24th. <laughs> so you can't do it. But pay attention to that, you guys. Everybody's done. We've all done it. But pay attention. And then count them out. I'll do the rest of them. 35 days is that day. Okay? But then look and see where it falls. No, I'm not like Mondays and, when, and Fridays are the worst. Try to close on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? Because if something happens on Wednesday, um, they forgot something. They didn't make it. They didn't deposit enough money. You can still fix it. Where if they do it on Friday, hey, you didn't have enough money. We can't get it done. Now you're not closing. And guess what happens? Okay? Your buyers are sitting out front with a moving truck and seven people ready to do the stuff in. And then you get to call them up. Hey, funny story. <laughs> uh, you can't move in today. What? We'll burn the house down in your bed. You know, they're all freaked out because you weren't doing your part. So don't do that. Pay attention to that, you guys. Uh, we did the due diligence, uh, uh, inspections. Here, if it does not apply, whoops, ne this is Jeff. Never waive it. Always NA it. Because what you can do here, so let's say this, and I've seen this one before. I'll wave it. Guess what? If you find mold, you just wave it now you can't come back. If I ain't it, because when you're doing this, you guys, this has to look good. I have seen this before. Where it does it? No, go here. 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 You get my point. Okay. They're doing every every inspection. Now I got three offers. I look at this one. What do you think I'm going to tell my sellers? Don't worry about it. Get rid. They really don't want this guy. They're going to be. They're going to be anal about the whole thing. And let's move on with their lives. These guys are probably going to probably going to want everything. So we're not going to deal with this guy. Okay. Now if I put here home inspection would be buyer. I put NA here. Pass, we don't really have to do pass unless it's uh, unless it's uh, um, BA. If I do this right here, now when I look at it, now there's a pool, let's say there's a pool, then I'll say the buyer's going to pay for that. Mechanical, I am A, Uncle, I am A. Now, what looks better? That. God damn it, Jeff. That? Or when it was full of buyer doing everything? Well, definitely not. Because what happens right here, you guys, all I need to do is a home inspection. Lily, if the home inspector says to me, Jeff, I think we found mold underneath the sink, the kitchen sink. I got two choices. I can get out within my due diligence, or I can say, we had a mold and funnel. But now that we found it, we want to do the inspection on it. And then we're going to do the remediation. If I waived it, now I can't come back to them, Gabe, and say, funny story, we found mold. <laughs> and now we want to fix. Well, you've already waived it. Or we're going to cancel because we found mold. Well, you can't cancel if you found mold because you already waived it. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So think about that, guys. A lot of it doesn't apply. We don't have an elevator. You know, it's a mini you know, there's no elevator in the house. Okay, you get that one. So think about what it looks like on here. Because you guys, all you need to do is all inspection in the pool, and you can still get out of the deal. And if you find something, you can address it then. Oh, there's a roof leak. 
okay, hey, due to the fact that we, we had an inspection and we found there's some problem with the roof, we want to have that inspected as well. Okay, we're good, right? Because it was not applicable at the time. So make sure you do that. This is Jeff. I know there are some brokers that say, uh, no, you should wait. I just don't like to have you wait. These are all kind of standard. News. What's that? Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, that's a big dump. That's a big one. Wow. wow. What one dump? Rates. Pictures rates. Three quarters of a point. That's so, good. Gonna buy next year anyway. Yeah. Somebody that was at 8.275 and now they're down to 7.49 today. Wow. So we are over three quarters. Nice. 83 quarters. My guys buy Dubai homes 83 quarters. When Mark was a young guy, they were paying 16% interest. <laughs> when he was doing real estate, when he was 20. Uh, no. Well, Outside, right? Yeah, yeah, that was the big difference. The prices were a lot lower. Yeah, well, yeah, but what was the minimum? Min what was also a gallon of gas? How much was it? Less than a dollar? Oh, yeah, yeah, gas was less than a dollar. And you're making less money too. So, it's, well, it's everything all this compensates. It's yeah, it's, it's all relative. relative. It's all relative. Yeah, my buddies in Australia are paying 10 or 12 dollars a gallon. Yeah, you're probably doing that in Argentina, right? What's, what was gas in Argentina? It's uh, uh right now it's uh, like yeah. a dollar ten a liter. Yeah, and then there's four liters yeah. in a gallon. Right? We need three point six. Yeah, something like that. So in Australia, well, yeah, but that. you know what's the biggest baddest the biggest baddest engine you can actually find in a car? Right. I mean, we're talking the average. Oh, yeah, they have these huge ramps, but every now and again, right? The absolutely baddest, meanest engine. It's in a Renault. It's a two point five liter, which yeah. is the same two point five liter that you find in a Sentra. Yeah, yeah. They don't really sell Nissan because since Renault bought Nissan, Renault's been in Argentina. For ages and ages, right, right. they just combine that. Yeah. It's funny you say because I was in uh, I was in Europe and same thing as in London. And same deal as like this guy's got he had two point three liter uh, uh, diesel, you know, and, and a rabbit. And I'm like, wow. And he's like, man, this is thing's awesome. And I go, my diesel truck is seven point three liter. He freaked out. What? You're kidding me? Yeah, he was beside himself. My You're wife, right. My wife has a six point five eight a V ten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, here though, ah, and gasoline, by the way, not even diesel. Yeah, so you want to talk about right. 10 months a gallon? <laughs> That's funny. Escrow fees are generally always split 50 50. Lender, lender, the buyer is always going to pay his own, seller's going to always pay his own. Now, you guys, these are negotiable. Okay, you can negotiate it. If your buyer really wants a property, you can say, I'll pay all the escrow fees. The transfer fee, the uh, this is the government transfer fee. Generally, the seller pays for it. But if you want to, if you're a buyer's agent and you your buyer really wants the, the house, that's it. You can you can do that. It's five dollars and ten cents per per. I'm gonna say five dollars cents per gallon. Five dollars and ten cents per thousand. So what I do, let's say I have a two hundred thousand dollar house. I go times five point one. It's five point five dollars ten cents. So there's a there's a thousand twenty in that, and I go time. Oh no, hang on, Jeff. Come on. Times thousand uh, times one. That's a thousand twenty dollars on that two hundred thousand dollar house. So if your client says, Jeff, I really want this property, instead of raising the price, offer to pay the transfer fee and figure it out. Five dollars and ten cents per thousand, right? But but the problem is everything you just got to raise the price. Offer to pay that. The appraisal again is going to be the uh, buyer, but you can ask the seller to pay it. It's going to be rare that they do, but you can. In a buyer's market, Lily, yeah, they'll pay it. Uh, and then anything other, uh, prorations, preliminary title report, they'll give you that. Closing fees, if your client needs closing costs today, you guys, most of the time, closing costs, especially in an environment, they're not really paying them. Doesn't mean you can't ask, but always put a number in here. Do not Whoops. Do not put a percentage. Whoops. Put anything in there. My bad. Three. Seven. Don't do it. Oh, because I'm going to go $3,000. 
And then you can put either excluded or excluded. Included means any other cost that might be a program, like VA sometimes has other little fees. Say I want 3,000 including all the costs or 3,000 excluding it. Meaning if I say 3,000 excluding means I want 3,000 plus all the other fees that might be along with that. Or 3,000 including all fees. All I want to spend grand, okay? Home protection, I strongly recommend everybody, uh, your buyer, if you have a buyer, by the way, you guys will know me, I am not found on giving gifts to my clients. I think it's flipping silly. Great service, strong negotiator, answering their phone calls is your service. If you're going to give them something, make sure you give them a home warranty. And negotiate a home warranty from the seller. That's I always want that. You guys, this is the best risk reduction you can do in real estate. So please make sure you're doing that. Buyer requires the seller. Whoops. Buyer requires the seller. It's HSA, as I say, for the argument's sake. And then put a number here. You don't need to get them the, the most expensive plan. Give them the $400 one and let them upgrade it if they want to. You guys, that's the best risk reduction you can do. So make sure the buyer requires. If it's in a CIC, it's the seller by law, right here. There it is, at seller's expense. It's an NRS statute, which means it's a law that they pay the HA. Now, again, you guys, if you want to make your offer look good, tell the seller in your offer, buyer will reimburse the seller for the HOA package upon upon a, a successful close of escrow. Make sure you put successful close of escrow, mm -hmm. not just buyer or reimbursement. Because if it doesn't close, they're going to expect your buyer to pay it. Upon successful close of escrow, buyer will reimburse the seller. You guys, it's six, six, seven hundred bucks. It's another quiver that you could do to get your offer accepted. I'm giving you stuff that I need to teach my class next week. So make sure you're doing that. Five days, make sure they understand it. Make sure you give them the receipt. If you're an agent and you're you're the buyer's agent, you get the HOA package, you have five days, your seller, I'm sorry, your buyer has five days to accept it or reject it. Yeah, but we're not doing uh we're not doing this next week though. No, next Wednesday, I think it is. What's Wednesday? Wednesday fifteenth, not the eighth. No, no, next Wednesday. Yeah, next Wednesday here. I'm teaching. Yeah, I think the calendar that they put out. Had when they the eight? What's next week? The eight. They said that they're not doing it next week. They say it's a week the following one. Okay, well, good. I don't have to do it. Like last week? No, no. Last week we didn't. And next yeah, last week, week we didn't do I, it. And next week we are not. I had the. Okay. We can get the schedule. What the hell is week? It's not Veterans Day. Either. I think so. Veterans Day on. Something's going on that we don't have a. Friday, I think Veterans Day, isn't it? Anyways. Uh, so, guys, make sure you understand right. this part of it. This is important yeah. because if all contingencies have been met, meaning they're all done, and you still have received this, the HOA package, and your buyer wants to get out, they can get out based on that. Okay, so make sure you're looking at that. CIC package, you get you guys, whoops, a lot of times it's going to be seller, seller, seller. But if you really want to make it, your offer look good, ask your buyer to pay. So you can say here, buyer will pay that. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my bad, my bad, my bad. You can't sell her, but in, in the age of danger and March, you can put buyer will reimburse seller. These are going to be anything you want. Always going to be the real property, SRPD. Open ranges, that's for um, uh, land, and then construction defects, uh, if there is construction defect. Lead base only if it's built uh, before 1978, and if it's smart home disclosure. So make sure you know which one it is there. Fair housing, walkthroughs generally going to be three days. So make sure you're going through that. I want the property at close of escrow, unless they're going to do a rent back or something like that affect the seller. So make sure you're paying attention to that. Mediation before litigation. Any defaults? These are just some of the escrow instructions. Broker compensation will or will not. Will, you get the, will your buyer be paying your transaction fee? Please say yes. Make sure you're doing that. Hold harmless ways of claims. Again, you guys, make sure you read this. This is just some of the definitions that apply. Exchanges, any other central terms. 
any additional things right here if you want to put, like say you can put buyer to, to reimburse the seller uh, on successful close of escrow for the CSE package. If you want to do that, and uh, make sure you disclose this if it's a family member, please disclose if it's your family, your mom, cousin. Yes, it does, or no, it doesn't. Please respond by. Please make sure you're filling this out. 5 p.m. Today, you guys, especially, I would give them, like today, I say we're going to do this off on Friday. I would give them till like the 8th to let us know if they're going to accept it. Give them a few days. Don't give them one day. Now, when you're in, when you're in uh, uh, counter offers, yeah, give them one day. Time is of the essence in counter offers. Unless they call you and say, hey, my buyer's not, or my seller's not going to be here on Tuesday, you know, find out. I had one one agent. I told him my buyers, my sellers were out of town. They're out of town, and I said, "So you know, when you put your offer in, give us till you know next Thursday or whatever it is." He sends her an offer with one day. I call him up. I said, "I just talked to you about this. That you can't. My, but they're not going to be able to sign it. They're traveling. I told you to make it till Thursday. Send the last page over fixed. I mean, you guys, you got to pay attention to this kind of shit. It's, it's weird. So." Give them a few days, especially today. Counter offers, no, one day. Uh, make sure everybody signs initials. And please, you guys, fill this stuff out right here. This is important because you can come back to it and see exactly what it is. Are they, does that, are they FERPTA, foreign person, accept, reject, count, make sure they hit all these boxes and go that direction. Questions for me, you guys. Well, sure, you made it, you made it sound so much easier than Key Realty. Yes. They go into such crap details. Yeah. I think they teach it. Some of them even virtual. They say they're a long time realtors, but they get no, I it, like they went to pedagogy school to teach you there. Yeah. Yeah, guys. It, listen, it, it's once you really I mean you guys are new to it, so it, it's tough. But guys, and that's why you should get a purchase agreement. And I I recommend you guys this, and I don't want to say include your package, but you should get a purchase agreement and you should read every freaking line. And then talk to your your mentor, your broker, whoever it is. When I got into real estate, I took the purchase agreement and the listing agreement. I read every single line and put a question mark on what I didn't understand. And then I went and just I, I promise you this, you guys. Most agents, like you said, have no idea what's going on in that bed deal. Well, have you read any of them? Well, no, all I, all I need to know is to fill in the blanks. I didn't present your client. Well, I just winged it. Guys, winging it is not, not the way to do this business. Okay, please make sure you're paying attention to that. Guys, gals, Jeff Wallerman, Northwest Office. If you're ever in the Northwest, please come by and say hi. Uh, I hope you guys learned something and you see some value out of it. I might not be here on Wednesday, I guess. Uh, we have a little trick back us. Yeah. Uh, if, but if you're in the I'm teaching number five how to get your offer accepted and work with a buyer. And I'm going to teach you the freaking right way to work with a buyer. Okay, even though I hate buyers. But, but that's a good thing. So I'm going to teach you guys the right way to do it. Okay, that's the most important thing. You've got to do it the right way, especially. All right? Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Uh, the reason I know that we don't have next week, because I came last week, of course, wasn't here. They gave me the schedule. I right. updated one. Oh, they said, hey. And I found out, I even marked on calendar, we don't have next week or the week of uh, Thanksgiving. Right, Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Nelly, Gabrielle, appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. See you guys later. Thank Thanks, you so guys. much. Thank you. Again.